in demonstration uh, is really important. Testimonials are the best way to demonstrate what you do. Um, so as we go into the final step, we'll, we'll cover a couple things on demonstration. Um, but the final step is closing. That's what everybody fears. But it's the easiest thing to do if you do all these other things right. Um, back when I was selling cars, don't tell anybody I sold cars, but I did. Uh, I had somebody tell me, you know, don't ever tell anybody you sold cars. <laughs> but I did. And it's actually one of the best uh, sales jobs you can have because it's brutal. It is brutal. And people come to you to buy something. So unless you're horrible, you can't, you can't lose the sale. But I would have people apologize to me for not buying from me. And it was because I had gone through all these steps and everything, and they just wanted the position to buy for whatever reason. But this is a very important concept. Don't love your baby too much. It's not the prospect's baby yet. Let them fall in love with the baby. Now, that metaphor doesn't perfectly transfer, and that's not a baby because I don't think uh, – <clears throat> I, don't, I don't know. I don't know. I've debated a lot. You tell me. How would you react if I had somebody throwing a baby in here on me? Okay, it's possible. All right. So that's why I use the flower. Um, the point here is small business owners, we love our baby. The thing we've worked so hard on that's so much of our personality and it's the reason I did this and this that you don't understand. I was going through a bad breakup and I started this business and what? Oh, your, so your business is to satisfy you, not your customer, right? That's your baby. What's your customer's baby? I've got this problem. I'm tired of these countertops. I'm tired of these old stoves. That's the baby. You're in the business of adoption. Getting that baby and giving it to the client. Getting that baby, giving it to the client. And if you can do that, then you're going to be very successful. But most small business owners, entrepreneurs, if you will, <clears throat> they're just in the, in, the, in the business of satisfying themselves. Okay? So let it be theirs. If you have to explain demonstration more than once, you're doing it wrong, especially on your website. And the uh, kind of one more step extrapolation of this is if you have to explain it more than once, they're not even going to be there, so it's not going to matter. If you're not explaining clearly how the nuts and bolts of your emotional solution work, then they're, they're leaving. And that's the worst place because they've gone all the way down here. They self-identify that, yes, I am like a lot of your clients. Yes, I do want new countertops. Yes, I am interested in buying now because you've put copy in, in front of them that they would only click if they're ready to buy now. And then on that stage, if you do your job wrong and lose that client, that's the worst position to lose them from. So you've really messed up at that point. And those are the people that are really valuable to you because they're the ones who have winnowed out of all the other hundred people. You remember, we're four out of a hundred. This is one of your four that you're losing. So it's really critical to get this step right. You have to explain more than once you're doing it wrong. I put that picture up a long time. That looks like that one dude from... Um, I can't remember the name of it. It's the least work yet if you've done your job right. This is my definition of a sale. A sale happens when the right solution reaches the right problem at the right time. Any one of those three things doesn't happen, you don't have a sale. Most of what happens, what people don't like about sales when they say they don't want to be salesy or they had a bad experience, one of these wasn't present. So it was the wrong time, wrong fluid person, wrong solution. They're trying to shoehorn. I call it shoehorning. I don't like, I'm no, I'll never shoehorn. Okay. Now we're going to get into a few of the uh, kind of get into uh, the tactics, the tools that you're going to use. So we talked about integrated digital marketing, right? This full integrated digital marketing. So SEO, uh, it's clear optics. Get customers to see you. It doesn't sell. This is cleaning the windows on on your small business, on your street, your street facing business. It's it makes sure all the lights in your sign work. That's the metaphor. So it's going to bring people to your business. If your business stinks, all it's going to do is show people how bad it stinks. If your marketing stinks, it's going to reveal that to everybody. It does not market for you. It shows people where you are. Now, there are tactics within SEO that can function in your marketing. I'm not going to get into those today, but I will say this one thing. Title tags are the king. Okay? They rule the world of any marketing you can do in your SEO. So in your title tags, instead of saying life coach, you could say whatever transition, transition specialist or something like that. Figure out what people are searching and then use that as a title tag, but then attach the second one that's more along the lines 
of a solution you provide. Because what's going to happen is when people look at that search engine return page, they're going to read the first one, which is what everybody searches. Then the second one is going to be like, oh, this is what makes you sound different. This is going to make life coaches. There's a lot of them in Austin. All right, now I'm learning that. Yeah. So I have a friend of mine. Uh, she doesn't call herself a life coach for that reason. Yeah. She says I'm a this. And she goes like one step deeper and goes, whatever she specializes in, whatever main thing she delivers, that's the thing. That's what she puts in her title tag. Okay? Because that's the first time you're able to sell the meta description, which is it goes title tag, you little tiny URL, then below that is a meta description. And that is <coughs> where you should sell. Okay? Now, <clears throat> the thing about the sales process is that in search, it's kind of turned on its head. Because by the time people click on a page, and you should be working to get deep page deep pages ranked, not just getting people to your home page. If, so if, if, if we take our metaphor again, home page is the wide point of the funnel. Once they self-identify and go any deeper, they're going to an individual thing, right? So if I'm remodeling, then I'm kitchen remodeling. Then I'm granite countertops with oak cabinets with a painted face with a French finish. That's a very specific thing. I talk about using copy that tells you people are ready to buy. That tells you people are ready to buy. Okay. Then I'm actually going to try to send people directly to that page from search. Because if they're that specific and they want that, why wouldn't I let them go there? Right? So that said, I want specific information. We've done 37, uh, we did 37 home uh, kitchen remodels in 2015. With countertops. So, bam. Number one, I've got social proof. Somebody likes them. Somebody is, is doing business with them. Uh, they own houses. I own a house. I want granite countertops. They want a grant. It's social proof. The herd mentality, which a lot of people use as a disparaging term, but the herd mentality is actually a safety function. If everybody's going over here to drink this water, it's probably safe. I'm looking around. I don't see any other. I'm a cow. I don't see any other dead cows. I can drink this water. I'm all right. So that assumes cows have that much intelligence and they don't, but we're going to leave that. Uh, so SEO can be a marketing tool if you use it right, but it doesn't function mainly as a marketing tool, okay? <clears throat> SEO is less complicated than ever. There's no tricks anymore. Anybody watching this, because uh, I'm recording this now on my uh, laptop, I should point this up more. Uh, anybody watching this that is a true SEO Wiz understands that's not purely true, but it's mostly true. In the old days, um, you could search anything. I don't care what you search, and I could get you to my page. You could search pepperoni pizza, and I could get you to my page selling ladders. That's In the old days, I could do that. Can't do that anymore. Google will actually punish you even for trying, but you will not succeed. So your page has to be specific. The whole website now, that's the really big change that Google's made. The whole website has to be relevant for these terms. So if you have one page selling ladders and every other page on your site sells pizzas, fail. Your actually whole site will get punished because of that one page of irrelevance. Now that's a broad statement. There are exceptions, but generally speaking, that's true. WordPress, WordPress, WordPress. You should be on WordPress. If you're not on WordPress, go home tonight, get on WordPress because of a lot of reasons. We're not going to go into all of them. Um, and the third point is WordPress. <laughs> so the second point is WordPress, WordPress, WordPress. The fourth, the third point is WordPress. Why? Um, there's a billion reasons, but I'll, well, I'll, just, I'll, I'll just tell you a few. Number one, people, it's been 12 years now. It's launched in 2003. It immediately shot to the top of usage because Google liked it so much. It's open source, which means there are literally millions of people around the world working to make your site better because it's open source. All these people are working to make WordPress stronger. So you've got this entire team of people that's doing this. Now, people say Joomla and Drupal. They're similar in that respect. But WordPress uh, is more popular. There's more plugins for it. It's far more user-friendly for the non-initiate. Now, if you, know Word, if you know websites and you know coding, good on you. Ha have a nice day. Enjoy it. Most people don't, and WordPress does all that for you. All the elements that Google wants to see, WordPress does naturally. So a footer, um, you should have a three-column footer. Really common design thing to do is have a three-column footer. You've got what's called NAP, name, address, phone number, 
Middle section is your most popular links. Helpful outside links are nice too. So authoritative links, industry links. So if I'm doing remodeling, it might be the National Association of Remodeling. It might be, uh, you know, Better Business Bureau. These are links that are just general. These are helpful to anybody. Then a contact form. That's a really common thing to do in a footer. Well, I have a website that I have acquired from another source mm -hmm. that has all that stuff. Well, it, it may have all that and on the face, but can Google see it all clearly? I don't know. There you go. On WordPress, it can't. Just out of the box, it can see it clearly. <laughs> but, I, but I built this website. I'm not going to change it. It's, it's, it's custom for my business. Sure. Well, here's the thing. Here's, here's what you have to look at. You have to, for, for every business decision, we all have, always have to say, what kind of hill am I having to climb to achieve this? And what you want to achieve, I'm assuming, is relevance online, relevance on mobile, and relevance to, to Google. Those three things. You need those three things. I need to be able to be visible on SEO. I need to be good on mobile. I need to be re responsive on mobile. And I need to be uh, just good online total, which includes social media, integration, all this good stuff, inside and outside your website. So what kind of hill am I going to climb if I'm not one of those things? If you're not on WordPress and you don't know coding, the hill is much steeper and much harder. And a lot of times you have to having to pay a developer to do those things. Where in WordPress, most of them are done. You get the WordPress site set up. I'll give you a good, here's a good dollar number. So on a WordPress site, I can get a WordPress site to do everything you want it to do for 1500 bucks, And that, that's going to be a nice looking website. Where if you custom design a website, I mean, if, you're, if, you're, if your coder's any good, I can't imagine you're out of it for less than 2500 I'm not, uh, I, I, <laughs> You may have had a different experience, but that doesn't prove the rule for everyone. I'm a photographer. I yeah. bought my capability through mm -hmm. a, through a facility that builds just websites for photographers. I use their sure. widgets and built my own website. Gotcha. And it's custom for for uh, uh, desktop, mm -hmm. for laptop, and for mobile. That's great. It's built in. Does it doesn't does it for me? It ties to all of the websites. It goes or it goes to Facebook, sure. Twitter, Pinterest, Instagram, blah blah blah, and it takes credit cards. Mm -hmm. It does all this. these like, things I like, can't do. Right. And, and I want to be clear here. I'm not saying that anybody that's not on WordPress is screwing up. What I'm saying, this is for everybody. This is for, if I'm talking to 100,000 business owners who are looking at what do I need to do to make my business successful, that's what I'm saying. I'm not saying that anybody that's not on WordPress is screwing up. What I'm saying is, as you go through your lifetime, I will tell you a common experience with people in your case, which is I'm in this vertical. I'm buying this website from these people who say they're in this vertical, they're serving this vertical. Well, if, if, if Google, which has happened, if Google or WordPress make their vertical and their business model obsolete, which happens all the time, Google made TomTomGo almost go out of business, which was the worldwide leader in GPS, almost completely killed their business. They killed Sony Ericsson's phone business. Do you remember Sony Ericsson? You know, Google and iPhone just killed their business. So when that happens, that serve that person who's serving you, they're no longer there. That's the difference between what you're talking about and WordPress. WordPress is open source, so there is no person to go away. They're all still there because number one, Google loves them because they're doing them a favor. They're giving them more relevant pages to show to everybody. That's why WordPress is so popular. And you're buying a template and having somebody install it. There's nobody now that you're 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 beholden to to keep that going. With a vertical server like this, which they're, they're, some of them have done very well, um, if that happens, they go away, and now you're in this place. That may never happen. We're so far along now, it's less likely that it's going to happen now. And the nice thing is, even if it does, one fifteen hundred dollars conversion, you're out. You know, it's not a it's not a, a world ender. Uh, but again, what we're talking to is wide point of the funnel. We're talking to the most people. And for the most people, WordPress is going to be the best fit. Okay, so um, relevance has replaced tricks, and what this means is, if you write relevant con content, and as a photographer, you're in. I never understood this term, the catbird seat, but I understand what it means. I don't understand why it means that, because it's catbird, he's in the seat. I don't know. I don't get it. But you're in a very good position. 
because Google loves images. And you're able, if you leverage that correctly, I've got a Facebook group that I'm putting together for photographers and where I'm trading your B-roll, the stuff you're never going to use, I'm trading that for marketing consulting, essentially. And so I put up my tutorials on images, how to do images and stuff like that, and different tips and tricks on how to use images online, and uh, then I get your B-roll. Uh, the reason for that is because images are so powerful and so few people use them well, okay? So if you write good content, you use good images, um, your user flow is good, this is why buttons are so important. Google now tracks how people move on your site. Oh, really? It's not just do they arrive on a page, yay for you. Yeah. How do they move on your site? Because the more they move around on your site to Google, that's relevance. Why am I going to click through several pages if it's not relevant? Right? Now, there are exceptions to that. If somebody gets on a page, stays on it for a long time, then makes a decision, generally that's a good idea. But a lot of times, if you have a really good web page, they're never going to go to another page. If they go straight to my granite countertop with oak cabinets and hardwood floors or hardy plank floors, if they go straight to that and then click call us to Google, that's a bounce. But I really don't mind that because I got a customer out of it, right? But that is a bounce to Google. Google, a bounce, your bounce rate is how many times people came to a page and left. Did you have a question? Yeah. Hit I me. mean, again, maybe it's totally, that's okay. Um, how do you know? Like, I want to know. I have a website. It's mm -hmm. built on WordPress. Mm -hmm. But I don't know all the stuff that's going on behind. I don't know how it's ranking in Google. I don't know. Oh, how that's easy. That's the Google. What, 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 do you know what your title tags are? No. If you don't know what your title tags are, you're probably not ranking. <laughs> no. And yeah. am I supposed to do my own title tags? Or Somebody is. Somebody do them for me? I, I yeah. had my website created um, by someone, but it was built on WordPress. Most, most, I will tell you this, and I'm not being mean to developers, most developers don't even need to be doing your SEO. Most of them don't. That's one of the unique things I bring to the table. I'm not pitching, but it's yeah, true. No, I, get it. I know how to write, I know how to do SEO, and I know how to get your WordPress site to, to look correctly. Now, I'm not a world beater WordPress developer. I don't claim to be. I let those guys do that. But that's custom, and there's a lot more expensive. You know, you're probably starting three grand and up on, on a custom site. Because what you're then doing is taking custom elements and putting them on a WordPress platform. Yeah, yeah. But you know that. I just I feel pretty comfortable with my website. Sure. I just need to know right. being tagged right. You need an analysis by somebody who knows analysis. what you're talking about, okay. and then you need a plan. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, we'll talk. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> but there are people that you could just do. We'll just analyze your website and say. These are the things you need to do. I'm sure, I'm sure you do that too. Yeah, sure. I do. Definitely. Yeah. I just finished one last week. Yeah. And what I do is I and shoot it all on really screen capture video. Either. No, generally, I mean, 300 bucks or less. Right. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through 10 pages of your website because you don't need to have just your home page and analyze. Right. I'm going to go through, the way I do it is three, piece, three pieces, SEO, uh, sales, and then uh, conversion. So I'm looking at the copy. Uh, both for conversion, how a, how a reader is going to per, uh, perceive it and interact with it, and then I'm looking at the actual SEO, backend SEO, and then the front end customer facing SEO elements, which are going to also tie in with conversions. So these are the, the pictures, the button clicks, uh, how easy it is for me to find things on your website, because in the end, in the long run, those are all going to affect Google. Now, the, one of the nice things for what I feel like is a really big benefit is <clears throat> as a consumer, you're going to get screen capture video, which means you're going to see me talking about the things on your website. So you both have a plan of action, but it's also, you can just give this to somebody. If you don't want us to do it, if you're going to pay somebody else to do it or do it yourself, if you know how, then you can just go through, oh, this is it. This right here is exactly where you want it to be. Instead of a piece of paper or a web page going, do this, do this, do this. It's a video that shows you how to do it. Okay. So, uh, yeah. So you need a plan and how to, how to execute that. Okay. Copy's never been more important than now. Uh, Content rules. <clears throat> they've been saying that for a long I time. Know, but in the last two years, you've probably heard of Panda and Penguin, the updates Google made. No. Oh, okay. <laughs> All right. Panda and Penguin? Yes. Well, it's just the name of the software. They upgrade. Well, every time Google does a, a massive upgrade, they, <laughs> they name it as an name. animal. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Like Apple with Lion and... Well, now those are operating systems. Well, I know, but they're making yes, 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 yes. Yeah. So uh, those two updates were all about relevance. That's why you, your whole website has to obey 
your photography has a web, website, has, all the pages have to be about photography. You can't make one page about remodeling. Now it could be pictures of remodeling, but it's got to, you better write your copyright so it doesn't look like you're trying to rank for remodeling, right? So copy is, I mean, it really is everything, but there's elements within the copy. You put a video, if you embed a video on your page, if that video is not uh, optimized properly, then you're really losing a lot of impact because Google, Google, the, the, the search bots see the code. They don't, they're not watching the video. They're looking at code, and the code's not telling them anything about the video. So if you don't own that video, then you need to make sure that maybe somebody else can optimize it or search it by keywords and make sure that if Google – a really easy way to, to reverse engineer this is – what's, what's a keyword? Give me a keyword. Relationship. Relationship uh, coaching? Right. Let's call it that. Relationship coaching. Okay, I'm going to go to YouTube. Relationship coaching. Now, I don't want rivals. I don't want to put a rivals, somebody else they might do business with. But what I do want to do is in the top 10, if I can find it, I want to go relationship coaching or how to have a better relationship, maybe. Okay? So I'm going to find somebody who's generic, who doesn't do services, who doesn't do coaching. I want to embed that video if I don't have my own. Okay. Does that make I sense? I have my own. But I feel like I'm doing all these things, but I, like I was telling Miller, I just don't know that they're reaching anybody. I don't think I'm tagging it right. I don't think I'm, yeah. That's the thing. That the, There's so many little things. Like if, if you embed a video on your website, uh, do you know how to turn it off to where it doesn't suggest other videos? No. That's powerful. Because I'm giving people nine I'm paths so off my website. I see that. Yes. See that. Mm -hmm. So I don't want that. I also don't want the title on the video. I'll give you a little ninja trick. I don't want the title on the video. You mean up there in the top corner where it says? Well, actually, across the whole top. Yeah. But if it just says score Austin? Nope. I don't want any title. No title. You know why? No. Because I can click on the title and leave my, leave your website. You don't give them any excuse to leave. I don't want them any excuse gotcha. to leave. Okay. So I just take that same title and put it in an H2 put? tag. H2 tag. Okay. Right above the video. Above the video. Now, H2 is right under H1, obviously. That's why it's called H2. <laughs> but H2 is a very important tag to Google because it's next to the H1. You can only have one H1 per page. You can have lots of all the others, but you shouldn't really have a lot of H2s. H1, H2, H2. H3, H4. Okay, what does H stand for? Um, <laughs> what? Better. Headers. Yeah, it is. It is header. Oh, okay. Wow. Where are you finding this? On the actual YouTube? Or no, YouTube? this is in WordPress. This is when you build your WordPress page. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's also it's also okay. in the thing that I use. That they have, they sure. Well, it's HTML. It's not. This is not unique to WordPress. This is HTML. What WordPress does is they have what's called a WYSIWYG editor. What you see is what you get. And now a lot of websites have that now, but when WordPress came out, they didn't. You had to know code to do this stuff. So you have a visual editor. You can go in and just go bink, everything's changed. Instead of having to know, I need to bracket H2, bracket <laughs> all my words, hashtag, and if I use the wrong hashtag, I leave the code, load the code yeah. open. The entire page goes H2. Yeah. So anyway, that's, that's a way to use video on your page. That's a little, we went from 30,000 feet all the way down to ant level. Right, right. So we'll come back up and talk about email marketing. Email marketing is a long cycle. Now, remember, we're talking about full integrated digital marketing. So what that means is we're talking about a lot of tactics that you use to achieve the same results. That's really what it is. People get siloed. Silo is a very important term in online marketing. Anybody not know what a silo is? Okay. So a silo, uh, I always ask that question, then I always answer it anyway, as if everybody said no. <laughs> But the reason I use the term, I really like it, is because a silo is a thing to keep a lot of stuff in that it can't get out. But it's vertical. It says vertical. You put a whole bunch in there, right? And so you can treat email marketing like its own silo. But the problem is if you don't integrate it and connect it to your other stuff, then you, you've lost a lot of the impact, the power of it, okay? Collaboration. The whole is more than some of the parts. So... People use email marketing like a standalone thing, and they don't do the things they can do to connect to the website, to connect to the other value propositions there. By the way, value proposition is very important. Value proposition is I am proposing that this service, this product, 
has more value to you than the money that's in your pocket. That's what a value proposition is. And you need to think about how you're doing that. I'm proposing that my coaching for your life is worth more than the money in your pocket. It's going to do more for you than the money in your pocket is doing for you. That's a value proposition. So email marketing should have your value propositions in it. Your website should have its value propositions in it. So when do you come out of email marketing and push to the website? Those are key questions. Now, the thing about email marketing is you can't use uh, you can't use just your standard Gmail on it. Once you mail to over 50 people, uh, they'll start marking you. They'll start knocking you. You can number one, you can only do it to 50 people. But once you start pushing out a lot of emails through uh, just a standard like Gmail platform, you're, it's really easy to get marked for spam. Super easy to do that. So you're going to use tools like MailChimp, like Constant Contact, and these are one-to-many tools, right? So you're trying to cram as many people as you can. Wide point of the funnel. We're back at the sales process, right? Greeting, rapport building, uh, presentation, demonstration, and close. So you're in the greeting and the rapport building phase in your email. Uh, so sign up here for my five tips to better relationships. Okay? They're going to sign up for that. The messaging you give them is critically important. So you always have to think about the end result you want. The number one mistake I see in email marketing when I go in, there's no path to a sale. It's all information. It's all educational, which is fine to a point, but at some point it needs to sell you something, right? So how do you get them there? Well, you're back to the five steps of the sale. You're going to referral build. What's the value proposition that you're offering? You need to have a real clear picture of that. Testimonials are powerful in email marketing. So mix in just the same way you'd build a web page. Content, 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 testimonial. Amanda's the best life coach I've ever seen. She helped me with my relationships, turned my relationships around faster than I had ever thought possible. Content, content, content. Okay? Offer. Somewhere down there, there's an offer. I'm offering a free uh, call on Thursday. This is a group call. We all get together. I'm going to talk to you about some core principles. If you want to go farther, you can. Or a better step for me, I think, is half off uh, your first session. You know, that's going to get somebody to buy. People, this goes back to your baby. The, the, the fact of pulling money out of my pocket and buying from you, at some point, no matter what the price is, on some level, no matter what the price is, the fact that I bought changes everything. You think about the fact today, I'm not picking on anybody here. I'm not picking on score or anything when I say this, I want to be clear. But you came to a free presentation today. Oh, it wasn't free. Mm -hmm. This, how much was this? Eighty dollars for the set of three. Oh, okay, yeah. cool. Well, that's great. To me, that's way better. I would much rather talk to people who paid to be here. But yeah, we find that if we don't, this is going to be sound weird. But if we do a free workshop, mm -hmm. we don't. We have a whole bunch of people sign up, and then because they don't find value in things, they end up free. Well, it's not that they don't, don't, well, so they don't find value. This very important concept here. They don't have any skin in the game. That's part of it, yeah. but, but it's what value are they pursuing? Yes, and if they think it's worse, then I mean, they'll pay for it, right? They, they think it's free. Not they those people. No, not right. those people, right. Yeah, there's a certain set of people, and I learned this by networking in Austin. I used to do a ton of networking. I used to go to 20 networking groups a week. I mean, that's pretty much all I did. So do free, free is done to bring people? It does bring people. It does. But it brings a lot of people who are looking, looking to go to free stuff. Right. That's the value. And that's that what we're having Corpus for. Yes. Yeah. In fact, they just came for lunch. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Serious. Yeah. 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 They offered free lunch and a yeah. free workshop, and they weren't interested in starting a business at all. Right. And we don't do these to just to get people. Yeah. We really want to help yeah. small businesses. Absolutely. And, you know, and I don't well, that's why I started recording if everything. Two, three or four. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. But it's, if they, but okay, they have skin in the game. Yeah. It's a different. Yeah. So again, you get down to this thing of what what is your audience pursuing? Right, and you want the free people out of there as fast as possible. Oh, good. Yeah, <laughs> because the, the, you you can't from a from a content standpoint, you cannot differentiate between the free people and the people who are willing to buy but are just checking you out. There's no way to tell <laughs> the difference at the content standpoint when you're not present. With them. I went to your talk, as you know, about three, two or three weeks ago, 
We talked about this email. Instagram thing, yeah. I and, Instagram. Instagram. and a comment that was made either by you or by the woman from Stephanie. Stephanie. Yeah. Was that in email marketing, you don't try to sell something on everything. You go one, two, and try to sell on the third. One, two, try to sell on the third. Now you're yeah. saying put an offer out there on everything. Well, well, so hey, if, take this. Know, if you said it, but no, 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 but think about it like this. Think about it like this. Because this is the second thing, and I'm not picking on you, but I just want you to think about this and maybe be willing to have a little bit of an open mind here. This is the second time that when I've said something, you've gone hardcore concrete. This is exactly what you're saying to do every time, all the time, because this is the right thing. So what I want you to take a step back from that idea and go, what I'm presenting to you are principles, not tactically do this thing every time. It's the difference between me telling you drive this Jeep over there and get that pizza. Every time I get in the Jeep, I'm buying a pizza? No. See what, what, I, what I'm looking for sure. is I feel like Amanda expressed in, in that we've done some things, but it's not working. I feel I've done a lot of things, and I don't right? think it's working. That's such a great and question. I don't understand why, what it is that's going to work, and yeah. I really want to find that. Yes. Well, the, what you've expressed is the most common expression among small business owners. It's what's the thing. The, the hard answer for that is there's no thing. Same it's thing. concept. It's the whole thing. It's This has to be present every single time. I have something I call a core, core conversation audit. Not core, core conversation audit, just one core. I said two cores, but there's only one. <laughs> core conversation audit. And the purpose of it happened, it was just for me. And the thing was, for me, is I'm a small business owner. So you, re you hit these points of, I call them lulls. You hit these little lulls in the day. And it's like, okay, I just got off this call. I thought it was going to be two hours. It was only 20 minutes. So I've got this block of time. And so you don't have an action that's immediate. So what can I do to make a difference? Well, I can go answer these emails. Yeah, answering emails doesn't do a whole lot for you. <laughs> what does do something for me? Well, I could talk about something. So what am I talking about? Well, what are my value propositions? Well, here's my value propositions. So you should know your core three value propositions cold, cold. So if somebody walks up to you and asks you what you do, you don't take pictures, you're not a photographer, because those, number one, those things are commodities. That's a can of corn on a shelf. Okay? Are you any of you trying to go into the business of producing corn in cans? No. Why would you try to beat those people? There's millions of them, and they do it so much better than me. Okay, so why be a photographer? I'm not a photographer. I'm a, or not a, I don't do photography. I value proposition. So that's the first thing. How do you stand out from the crowd? Seth Godin, Purple Cow Marketing. It's the idea of standing out. Now, a lot of people have taken that the wrong way, which is to say, I paint my cow purple, I've solved everything. I just sound different. All I have to do is sound different, and I've solved everything. No. All that is, in sales, when you're selling a bad car, they call it putting lipstick on a pig. I have to qualify that because I said putting lipstick on a pig, and this woman got very upset with me because she thought I was calling women pigs. And I was saying you put lipstick. No, that's not what I'm saying. <laughs> It's actually the actual inverse. I know, I know, but a lot of people haven't heard it. It's a fascinating world we're living in. I said snake oil salesman in a group of uh, UT kids. No, what are you oiling a snake? What? So put lipstick on a pig is all you're doing. The, the whole pig stays the same. And all you do is put a lipstick on it. That's taking purple cow marketing and just going, I'm going to stand out and be different. No, you have, it has to be systemic. I used to do landscaping a long time ago. One of the things they use, which is not good, but it's called systemic herbicide. So you're killing fungus from inside the plant out. Fungus is a really hard thing to deal with in plants because it's so all pervasive. You have to treat the entire plant from the outside. So they develop systemic herbicide that'll go inside the plant from the root to come up through it. And it's actually kind of part of the plant now. It's pushing from the inside of the plant out. That's how you have to think of your messaging. Your mes messaging is core. So if I get an email from you, I'm gonna, it's going to say, I change people's lives by capturing the moments that they're not going to capture. Because what do, what, what do we all think? We're down the road. And he is able to <clears throat> get people. I'm giving a testimonial. Great. Yeah. Great. He pictures people. Uh, he captures the essence of a person. 
I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to jump out of my presentation. I'm going to tell you all something real fast. I don't know what the deal is. I haven't figured it out. But on the page, the constant contact page, no, it's great. When I shared it, did you see it on my Facebook page? I want to show you this. I'm not posting it on Facebook. That is sad, Celia. Oh, that I makes know, me sad. I follow you on Twitter, but I'm not on Facebook. Well, I'm going to show you this because I'm going to tell you, this is the best picture anybody's ever taken of me speaking. <laughs> I'm not, there's no exaggeration. Because Ed Bill took it. Yes. Uh, is that the one I took? Yes. yes. That's the one I shared. Oh, I shared it everywhere. But here's the thing. It doesn't. Now look at this. This is the one that another photographer took. Look yeah. how yellow that is. It's yeah. awful. Yeah, look at Bill's. Yeah, no, <laughs> believe me, when I shared it. But here's the thing. It doesn't show up on the constant contact page. But when I share the constant contact page, it's on there somewhere, probably in a smaller version. And it pulls in and populates as the core picture. I'm getting super tactical here, but I can't help it. it this illustrates things perfectly. Look at this. Yes, and look I at this. Said, now look at that. I sent that picture. Yeah, but where is it? It's not there. It's there, way down there. It is. I sent that picture. No, I, I know, I know. There it is at the bottom. Where should she put it? It should be the same way in the Facebook. It should dominate it. Well, I did Facebook. Okay. Well, you want to put it up top and you want it to but dominate. I don't do the constant contact, but I have control over that. Sure. Since See how this is? This is the way you want it to be right here. That's the frame you want it to be at. Okay. But you that showed your earnings, don't you think? Well, not only that, the color is good. I don't look like I have jaundice. <laughs> I really, that, you I really love this. You're struggling with somebody's question. I mean, you're so engaged. I right. Guess. Absolutely. Right. And he yeah. caught that. He, there's another one that he caught that was very good. I don't like this. It shows my gut. This one doesn't show yeah, my gut. I, I like, like that. That's a good thing. <laughs> I knew I liked that, bro. I knew I liked you guys. I knew I liked you guys. I would want you to do that too. Right. Right. Um, so what we're getting at here is. When you hear things, number one, you need to get these testimonials. What did you like about the pictures I took? Bing, bing, bing. What did you like about the pictures I took? Bing, bing, bing. That goes on your copy. Is that and your value proposition? That's yeah. the problem you solve. But that's right behind the value proposition. These are integrated. These are. This is two sides of the same coin. I know. This is and putting those on a website. I think it's. I mean, I'm doing this mainly to help other small businesses. Sure. Because I, they come to me and they show me their <clears> website, mm -hmm. and I use some of these principles. Yes, because they can't all come see you. So, so I need yeah. to learn as a mentor. Sure, to help them. Well, you just I think from the customer. All, but I can do a sure, bit. absolutely. Right. And you think from the customer's point of view. And I do from the part. from the yeah. uh, what do they want to see? Well, right. and, and you think about the weakness you have. Um, I'll tell you the weakness I have in the SEO. I don't advertise as an SEO person, but if I did, which I used to. The problem immediately that I saw is twofold. Number one, that everybody calls himself an SEO expert. Yes. Number two, you get emails in your email all the time going, we're SEO experts. We can do this and this and this for you for $200 a month. Okay? Right. Everybody's agreeing with this. This is how all pervasive this is. That means SEO is what? It's a commodity. It's a can of corn. Right. So what am I going to say? What do I say that's different? Now, there's another problem. SEO people are really slimy. They are really slimy. There's bad or worse than used car salesmen. Because there's a whole business model of SEO and paid search, by the way, that is I'm going to get you in, sign you up. I know you're going to leave in six months. I'm going to get you on the hook. I'm going to get you for as much as I can get you for per month for six months. And I'm going to do as little service as I can because you're leaving anyway. Even if I do a great job, whatever that's called in their parlance, you're going to leave. I know this. So why not shrink my service down, get my margin as high as I can, and you're leaving un unhappy anyway. There's a whole su a subsection of SEO and paid search that is built on that model. So I'm going to say something different. SEO is not the main thing I do for you. I'm going to come in, number one, we're going to analyze your content because your SEO is not going to be good without content anyway. The number one thing I want to know is when somebody comes to your page, after I've worked on it, can they find what they're looking for and can they engage with you and buy? That's what I want to know. Is that what you're after, or are you just trying to get to the top of number one page on Google? Because that's not really what I do. Now, what have I done? You distinguish yourself between others, for sure. That's number one, but they have to answer a question. They have to put themselves in a bucket. See, they have to self-identify. Which one they are. Mm -hmm. Yes, and when they say, no, I want the good content, great. That sets the entire conversation. Now, you, your setting would be, yeah, I'm a photographer because I take pictures. I have a camera in my hand, and I, I look at people, and I take pictures. But that's not really what I do. What I'm really looking to do, and if you can see with my portfolio here, what I'm really trying to do is capture the essence of the moment. 
that the normal person in day-to-day -day life is gonna miss. And you probably, Mr. and Mrs. Customer, you probably know what I'm talking about. You probably either tried to take pictures and they weren't that good. You didn't quite catch them right. You don't know why you can't catch that one light that you're looking for. Or you're not in the picture. Wouldn't you like to be in the picture with your husband, your baby, whatever it is? So this, take a look at these. Do you want this? Because this is what I do. I'm, I'm not the cheapest, and you don't want to be the cheapest. I'm not the cheapest, but I look for people who are investing in the future so they can look back one day and remember this. Thank you so much. Hey, absolutely. See you again. Nice to meet you. Um, that's your setting. That's how you set the table. And then every conversation successive to that points back to that. Oh, 1500 bucks. I wasn't expecting that. I understand it's more than you might have expected, but this is what I do. No, maybe whatever. But you never sell on price. You sell on the service. But you see what I'm saying? This now sets the table in a completely different way. But see, this is this is what I mean by systemic. This is ground up. This is not, okay, I'm going to use email marketing. That's going to fix everything. I'm going to use SEO. That's going to fix everything. Uh, paid search is the one thing I've been looking for. Instagram is the thing that's going to change. That's the wrong thinking. You have to think from the ground up. So what's my message? Number one, value proposition, salute, uh, problems I solve, testimonials. That's, that's, that's the beginning of everything you do. If that's not inside what you're doing, then so, – so when you approach it like, well, well, that person said do one, two, three, then ask, that's the wrong thinking. That's not the key that's going to turn the lot. Like in every movie you ever watch, there's always the key – that unlocks the one thing that changes everything. We're all looking for that, and it's probably not out there. Now, there are some things out there, but, but probably not. It's a march in an army. It's training an army, and you train them on one core concept. They all do the same thing when you tell them to do it. That's the way your marketing is. All of your marketing is centered around core ideas that resonate with the customer, and that propagates everything you do. This is why I call it the core conversation audit, because what conversation can I have every time that is going to still all point to the same direction of me getting to my goals. I solve the problems for my clients. Uh, their content's not relevant. They've hassled and hassled and hassled and hassled. They spent hundreds of their own hours and they're no further along the line. They feel like they're rowing against the tide. I come in, I get things aligned, I get them moving correctly, and we start making progress. And that's off your plate, right? So that's what I'm talking about. Those are my core conversations. And all I have to do is go to my clients I never talked about hassle and peace of mind. I never talked about that until one day I sat with my client and I said, we've been doing this for six months. How's it going? He said, the first thing out of his mouth, which really shocked me, I expected, you know, your SEO is good, your reports are good and all this, but it was hassle. I don't have to hassle with this anymore. It's emotional. Yes, that's the emotion. That's just to put yourself. Right. That's, you have to <laughs> make that. I really hate to leave. That's okay. That's okay. <laughs> I've got four clients. I got. <laughs> <laughs> well, you give a lot, and I appreciate it. Oh, well, I'll be really back for the third one, and I. Thank you. I don't, well, thank you for doing this. But now you're all going to have a cozy conversation. That's it. <laughs> Did you uh, record this? I recorded. It probably got 20, 30 minutes of it. That's about the limit. But I'm recording the rest on this. You're I should. Yes. You're on YouTube or something. Yes, I'll upload it to YouTube. Oh, oh, okay. It'll be screen capture. It'll have a little picture of me okay. in the bottom. Does it? As long as I get it, and I have to go. Did you get, did you friend us on our Facebook? Or I don't know. I'll figure it out though. We'll do. I'll do a uh, maybe I'm some way. I'll connect I'll with you. With you, but you have to come friend score. Yeah, yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Right. Absolutely. I'll send you a friend request. Perfect. That's up there. <laughs> awesome. Oh yeah, there it is. <laughs> By the way, this is why you don't want to send people to Facebook a lot. Like on some of your pages, if you're trying to get somebody to make a decision. I would recommend maybe not even having social icons on it. Like if I have a landing page, um, if, I, if I'm coming, the deeper somebody gets in the funnel, I'm going to take the social icons off those pages. Okay. Why? Why would I do that? Because you don't want to leave. Right. Not only that, but if they leave, look at what they have. Look at all this distraction. Yeah. Right. This is incredible. Right. There's so much stuff here right. that they can do besides making my decision that I want to make. When I mentioned the, the the things that aren't that aren't working anymore, but yeah. for things that is working, I didn't really mean one thing. But I was looking for you know, I, I I send people to Facebook mm -hmm. or I go I use uh, email marketing. I can have a very high percentage of people opening my email 
house. How many people are on your list? Uh, 330. Okay. And I get about a third open. Okay. I get um, about 10% click through and something. Mm -hmm. And um, then it puts them away. Yeah. But those are pretty good percentages. So they're interested in what I'm, what I'm doing. Sure. Pretty, You're getting pretty, people to take action. Pretty high interest. You're getting people to take and action, which is a, great. It's a, it's, a, it's a list that's very concentrated in the geographic area that I want. That's they, great. They all come from it and see my photographs before. Mm -hmm. So I think that's, but, it, but I'm not converting that. And yeah. I, I'm hoping to find some ideas. Now you've given me some ideas. About so here's a way to reverse engineer that, uh, is you just go, number one, what are they clicking on? What are they opening first? What do they open? Why do they open it? Then when they go into the email, what are you asking them to click on? Why do they click on it? That's a great question to answer. Can you get them to click on other stuff in an email that's similar to that? Then what page did you take them to? If you're sending them to Facebook, that's a mistake. That's a mistake. Because it's so distraction. And you're, how are you going to get them back after that? Well, I... Uh... I didn't send them to Facebook. But That's great. I, I thought you were saying you did. Uh, I didn't know. I was, I was thinking that, oh, it's important to have more people uh, follow you on Facebook. Well, maybe it's not. I have a, I have a personal page, but where I, where I expect them to go is a business page. And most of the people that have liked the business page are friends of mine. Not sure. People that Which is not bad for a photographer. That's not bad. But they're not my. Uh, but to uh, say that those are friends of mine, but they don't live in the geographic area. Oh, yeah, thing. yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, you know, the, the, you started with one one solution of yours is to get in front of more people in your demo, your geographical demo, right? Yeah. Okay, so how do you do that? I don't know. That's where. I, What's your geographical demo? Uh, Let's Lake do a Travis. workshop. Is. Lake Travis. Okay. Um, you want to share? Lakeway and Lake. Like when Lake Travis, great. So this is where Instagram, number one, you're a photographer. Instagram is going to be monster for you. Just monster. Because it's visual. It's images. Now, if you can put some wording on an image, that's even better. Because yeah. images are fine. Yeah. But you put you put an image that... Microsoft encountered a problem and needs to close. Um, so... Let me just, let me just, sure. Uh, I don't want to take you off your, your it's okay. We're in the tax proportion of this anyway. And we're, we're, uh, you, did you have a leaving time? No, I can leave. Okay. Mm -hmm. So we're, at, we're at 12 o'clock anyway. We were going to get into tactical. Uh, I think this is very valuable for people. So yeah. we can just workshop this and figure out where we are after, but this is a great thing to be able to reverse engineer. So you want to be in Lake Travis. So this is my, when I'm on Twitter or Instagram or whatever, I want to look at the demos I want to be in. Uh, my my Instagram account Instagram account for my uh, remodeling project that I'm doing in, in Dallas is is very specific to that because it's not really Dallas it's Flower Mound so Flower Mound's way north up near Louisville Denton up in there up in that area so I'm going on Instagram I hashtag Flower Mound and I'm going to follow everybody who's got Flower Mound hashtag and I don't care why because really volume is more important at the first part when you're building a social media channel. You want to just stuff everybody in there and then you can win on later, but just stuff everybody in there at first and start, start figuring out what the conversations are. Then always optimize your profile. If your profile is not optimized, you're losing big time, big time. And what optimizing your profile means is have whatever keywords you can in there, not keyword stuffing, but your value proposition. What's your value proposition? What do you really sell? What's the emotional state that I get from you when I purchase with you? How's that happening? Okay, so then a link, web link. Most people don't put their website in their profile. Also mention your demo. I'm a Lake Travis expert. I have taken over 4 billion photographs in Lake Travis. Now, what, what you have over everybody, over everybody, is you can take amazing pictures of Lake Travis. You probably take better pictures than anybody else that's putting stuff out about Lake Travis. So you go to Westlake, you go to... I'm thinking Lakeway, Westlake, right? Lakeway, yeah. Okay, Lakeway. Take pictures of the Chamber of Commerce. Go in and anything that is like high, anybody who's an influencer, go to them and say, listen, what I will do for you in trade, I will take great pictures of you 
and give you guys a great pub. Uh, and if you don't want to use my pictures, great, no problem. But I think you will. I've got all these testimonials that say that you probably will. I'm going to do that at no charge. Here's what I want in trade. You get whatever promotion or whatever because nobody takes good pictures. Nobody. That woman with those yellow pictures, she was a photographer. I mean, she wasn't a professional photographer, but she had a nice camera. Okay? And she did it as a favor. I realize this is recording. She might actually see this sometime. I don't want to make her feel bad because it wasn't – she even said, I'm not a professional, but I have this camera. Great. And it's fluorescent lighting. So, you know, you, you have to – you know, you know the thing. She did it as a favor, and she didn't charge me any money. So there's that. But you know what you can deliver. Okay? All I want, get credit. Get a link. A link is powerful. A link is powerful. Go to the people and go like, look, I'll give you this for free. Just give me a link. It could be down in the footer of the page. If you need help with it, I can get my guy or somebody, and you want to get somebody who can show them how to implant that link properly. Now, <clears throat> even better is you get a profile, a little profile page somewhere deep on the site. Is you get a little page, this is my photography, this is what I do, and you get a couple of contextual links. Now, what that means is, let's say you do family photography. Let's just say for the sake of argument, you do family photography. So instead of, tell me, what's the name of your business? A paparazzi. A paparazzi? A. Hey. 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 Paparazzi. Hey. Paparazzi. <laughs> hey, paparazzi. So there's that. Hey, paparazzi, which will take you to the homepage. But then you want to link like family photography that's going to take them deeper in the site. That's powerful. That's going to give you SEO value just out the ears. I mean, you can't, it's hard to measure that. But then also you're going to get seen. A lot of people are going to say, who took that picture? That was an amazing picture. Yeah, this guy from Hey Paparazzi, he took that picture. So you're getting two things. You're getting online value and you're getting pushed through in the real world because nobody does this. Take whatever your strength is, the thing that you can do just falling out of bed and give that away. But give it away in exchange for something. Yeah. So these, I do these. I'm not making any money off this and that's okay. What I get out of it, number one, is practice. I'm, I record this both for content, but also for practice. I'm looking, I'm like, I could do that, but I could stand differently. I could gesture differently. I'm a big public speaking student, so I really enjoy all this stuff. So that's where you want to start. That's going to give you more press through on your demo. And then strategically think about, somebody's going to see this. They're going to come into family photography. This is the nice thing about WordPress. You can get little widgets like email sign up stuff and put them on the sidebars of every page. Get my five, my 25 tips on how to take better pictures of your family. Because people on a budget are going to come there, they're going to see it, they're going to sign up, and they're going to try to take good pictures of their family. Most of them are going to fail. Eventually, a certain subset of those are going to buy from you. But that's how you get more people in your demo on your email list. Do stuff that's demo specific. Talk about it on all your social channels. Give links back to pages relevant to those social channels, I mean, uh, to that demo. So make pages that are about Lakeway and stuff you do in Lakeway. Take like five things, like if you're part of the Chamber of Commerce, have a page up about the Chamber of Commerce in Lakeway. And everything you do with the Chamber of Commerce, send it to that page. And if it's a big enough uh, channel for you, a vertical for you, uh, meaning that if you're having enough people ping you through that channel, then you can set up your a subset email list that's only Chamber of Commerce. That's one of the things. So one of the things I'm doing with this is I'm setting up an email list that is just for people who've heard me speak um, at SCORE. And I'm going to test that over you know the next few months and just kind of see how that plays out. Um, but then I've got the content that I can then use in my own marketing, see? So that's the trade for me. And then I'm getting a few links out of it, uh, y'all's website too. That's nice. Y'all's website ranks really well. I don't know who did that for you, but they do a great job. I was really surprised um, at how well it was done um, and how well you return for uh, small business workshops. I don't know if you're aware of that, but you guys do a great job with that. So that's how you are demo specific, but it's all built on your value proposition. If your value proposition is not solid and repeatable and right off real connecting, connects really well, all the it's just like SEO. All the SEO in the world will not fix a bad value proposition. Clean windows won't fix shelves that are dirty or empty. Same process. Value proposition, value proposition, value proposition. Problems you solve, testimonials, 
and then just start listening to those testimonials and then reverse engineer that into content. What you'll find is that your customer never perceives your business the same way you do. That is a universal truth. That is a universal truth because you have all your expertise and all your technical knowledge pushed into your business, and then that's coming out in the content. That's not the way they perceive it. It's not what they're buying from you. They're not buying your knowledge level. They can't even perceive the things you're talking about. They can't even talk on the same level you are because you know it better. If you didn't know it better, they don't need to hire you. But since they don't know it better, you need to pull all that back and go back from their eyes and go, how do they see this? What do they want out of it? And then you write that. Does that help? It does, yeah. So that all that goes into your email marketing, all that goes into your social. You, you have to understand what are people going to do on this channel? What's the best case scenario of what they're going to do? What's the worst case scenario? Worst case is they're not going to open the email. So what does that tell me? Well, my subject line needs to have my value proposition in it. Because if they never open it, at least they're getting my value proposition. <clears throat> and they'll come back to me and go, oh, yeah, I didn't open that I meant to, but I read the thing, right? I read the value proposition. Then when I'm now on my Instagram channel and they're following me on Instagram because they like all my cool photos, I happen to take decent photos. I take shots that I, at least this is what I'm told. I mean, people are always giving me feedback. That's an interesting shot. I've never seen that shot. I never thought about, you know, whatever. So that tells me a little bit about how people are perceiving that. How do I work that into, well, then I'm going to look at my remodeling stuff. One of the things I'm going to do is one of my trips to Dallas, I'm going to go buy a few of these jobs and I'm just going to take my camera in there and take a few Instagram pictures of these uh, jobs. So, because I, I know I can get a shot that not everybody is going to perceive. So you know you have that ability, you leverage that, right? So you, you're getting people into where they're going to perceive your value proposition. And <clears throat> I've got to reopen PowerPoint. No worries. Yeah, here we go. We have to get back to the slide we're at anyway. Okay. So, you know, it's not the tactic. The tactic or tool isn't going to fix anything for you. It's going to be all about your value proposition because all the tactics and tools are all about exposing the value proposition. So if you're taken to a page from your email marketing, for instance, you're getting people to click. What are they clicking on? So just go to that page and, and, and you know, just ask people for brutally honest feedback. Number one, if you don't have testimonials that – I don't have them on my website. Yeah. I have I have been saving their, the uh, testimonials. Intended to put up on one page of them, but your point is very well taken to spread them out. And, uh, yeah. So I have the I have the words of my clients. That's great. I haven't used them. Yeah. Yet. So, but you want to make sure that you get testimonials that say, "We hired him for to take pictures of our family." He took shots that I never expected, and I couldn't be happier. Now our memories are stored because that's what people are saying they're missing, right? Yes. That, I mean, our family, one of the big regrets, we have a whole, like, a 10-year period. There might be three pictures of our family mm -hmm. in this 10-year period in my that's 20s. That's not an uncommon story. Right? <coughs> so knowing that, that goes into your content. Mm -hmm. You want to shoot videos of people telling, telling that. You know, I just finished this session then that's what's great for instagram instagram's so great because you just take a little selfie i'm about to walk in and do another family photography session now you've got value proposition people are seeing you do it they're watching your video they're seeing how engaged you are on it one of my favorite things is uh, capturing the kids because i know parents are going to love this put that on instagram so you've got this steady diet of value proposition value proposition value proposition <clears throat> i had somebody complain about this because I did some promotion this week. You know, like I just felt like uh, you know, all you were talking about was selling. And when I went back to look at my channel, it was very interesting because 80% of what I was posting wasn't selling anything. But everything talked about the value proposition. So in this case, it was branding and how to connect different things to your branding. Most of it wasn't selling anything. There wasn't anything for sale. But because it was a value proposition, how is your branding? How is that working for you? You know, how to use YouTube for your branding. Um, and it says on it free tutorial. I don't, I don't, I don't know how that was salesy, but whatever. 
Uh, but but that's a good problem to have. That's that's when you know you're doing your job. When you know you're doing your job is when people are going, yeah, I'm hearing a lot about you. This family photography thing. That's when you know you're doing your job. So let's get on through some more of this, and we'll get through some more food. I just restated some stuff, and we covered some stuff specific to him. Yeah, so we're on the next part of email marketing. It's all about the platform. And the thing you have to look at is, uh, for your demo, how medieval are you going to have to get? And what that means is, do you need an email, pla email marketing platform that doubles as a CRM? Um, are you going to have to do a lot of callbacks and track that? Do you need to grade um, your leads? Do you need to score your leads? Um, you're speaking in a different language now? <laughs> <laughs> well, let's I put it this way. The, uh, do you need to contact, <laughs> do you need to be able to contact a thousand people? A hundred of those contact you back. And do you need to be able to go scale of one to 10? How valuable is this lead? Most of us, I don't think either one of you need to do that. I don't think either one of you need to do that in a really granular way. Okay. People that need to do that are like me. I sell multiple things at multiple levels. People engage with me on different levels. Mm -hmm. And I need to be able to track exactly what they were talking about, how they were saying it. And I need to have some kind of lead scoring system in place so that I can go back and go, okay, this is this kind of lead. And I know how to talk to them. That's going to cost you a lot more money. So that's my point. Something that does that is going to be in the two to 250 a month range. And it, but you're going to be able to hold 20,000. 20, email 20,000 people at a time, mm -hmm. unlimited emails. So you're talking about pushing out, you know, yeah. you could push out 100,000 emails in a month. Are you talking about a particular system right now? Like well, that's what I'm saying. It's all about the platform. Oh, you're just saying different. There's different, there's different platforms okay. from free all the way okay. to about 250 bucks a month at the small business level. Anything above that is enterprise, and you're never going to need that. If you need that, you're going to be the richest photographer in the world <laughs> because you're talking about pumping out massive numbers. We're working on that one. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, you don't need that. So up to about 50 bucks a month is probably the most you're ever going to pay uh, as a local business dealing with local people. Um, and really, probably you don't need to pay any more than 10, 10 to 20. Because at the first, MailChimp's first level of engagement is probably the most you're ever going to need. Um, the weakness will come when you want to start trying to integrate that with stuff on your website. So what would be, what would be great is to be able to go, I'm going to do a 24 uh, email campaign and in these 24 emails I'm going to cover these things and in this step I would like to be able to go to this landing page on my website have somebody make a decision and then if they make a no decision we just go right back into the chain but if they make a yes decision I want to put them into a different basket they don't get any of email A's anymore they're now go to emails B B right. section that's going to cost you a little bit more money but it's worth it because at that point it's so automated and what you're getting at the end of the day, it's like somebody just depositing money in your bank account because the people that you're getting saying yes from those are so hyper targeted and they said yes to a certain number of things. They're ready to buy when they get you. Now life coaching can be harder to get that done. Now one thing that might be something for you in the future, for whatever reason, uh, women in this field are doing very, very well right now. Now, so it's not live coaching. If you look on Twitter, you can find these people and you can kind of study what they're doing. What they're doing is siloing. They're going, I'm the beach body coach. I'm the single mom beach body coach. I'm the stay at home mom powerhouse coach. I'm the stay at home mom, your own business coach, right? So they're, they're talking to a very tight group of people, but for whatever reason, I don't know why, because these ideas have been around for a while, but for, for whatever, my friend's one of these, she's in a, she actually came out of a cult, a really dangerous cult where like her dad like killed a bunch of people. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. He died in prison. Wow. Oh, yeah. So it's a, it's a very like, holy cow story. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. It's pretty crazy. Um, but she's talking to a lot of people who've come out of the same thing, you know, the same lifestyle. And so she's a that, and she's already hashtagged it, named it and everything. And so that's how you have to do it. So um, it's really smart to brand yourself that way. So whatever it is, I'm the moments guy. I give you your, ooh, that's good. I give you your moments back. I give you your moments back. Some people call me a photographer, but what I really do is I give you your moments back. 
I specialize. I'm the master. I'm the moments master. You know, any of that stuff. Right there, you got a branding. Yeah. But whatever, <laughs> what you do is you keep saying stuff. You're really throwing stuff up against the wall until people go, oh. yeah. For me, shockingly enough, it's content ninja. When I call myself a content ninja, people go, oh. I've called myself a lot of other things, and it hasn't stuck. All of them are true. All of them are accurate. All of them would be great nails to hang my brand on, but they didn't click with people. Content Ninja is doing it. I think part of it is the way I look. I always say, you know, obviously I'm not a real ninja. Or I am, and this is just an elaborate disguise. <laughs> um, but, yeah, so. You, you really know, even have to pick one thing, and that's. That's why you have to, you, you can't sit in your den and muse. You have to get out in front of people and bounce stuff off of them. You have to look in their eyes when you're saying it. And if the light goes on, yeah. you've got it. That's, and you, you but you, it's all, it's trial and error. There's no other way to do it. There's no other way to do it. But like for you, you do more than just content. Not really. Everything but it all I do. Kind of comes back to content. You can well, say. Well, it's, it's really, it's, it's really, content is the core. Because if I'm if if we're doing a think about anything I do, if we are doing SEO engagement, it's useless without content. Yeah. If we're doing social media strategy, I'm I'm never going to engage with somebody who's only going to do social media. If they're not doing content, their social media is useless because social media is hey come look at my content. That's what social media is. Right, right, right. Okay, yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah, I just yeah. I mean, I, I'm definitely struggling with this because. There are so many. Like, I went to a networking thing yesterday where four different women got up and said they were like, well, three other than me said they were like, yeah. Um, and we, could, we could each give our little spiel. And, um, you know, I realized if I had just said, I'm a dating and relationships coach, like that would probably have resonated with more people than just the everybody else who just, but I, I do more than that. So I was just kind of like, I'm really yeah. struggling with, you know. Well, you have to figure out what what's the most commonality among what you do. And you might try dating relationships because that's going to get somebody to come up and you really, what's that about? Right. I'm not in the market, but I know my buddy is. Well, I really do more than that, but I, that's that's what I talk about. Um, you can also you can do something. What I've found is if you do – now, this is in networking groups, which is a different dynamic than your content. Your content, I don't have to worry about – like if somebody's looking at my web page, they're not looking at 60 other web pages and trying to remember everything. because that's what, But that's what's happening in networking yeah. groups. 60 different people are doing elevator speech. So two things I'll tell you that will make your elevator pitch be far better than anything else anybody is doing. Number one, be short. Everybody's long. Everybody, I mean, there's coaches out there who are telling people, you need to fill every second of a 60-second introduction. And that's what everybody's doing. And really, everybody's going over. Yeah. So if I stand up and I go, I'm a content ninja. Whoa. <laughs> and then I go, that's the only the similarity to ninja ends right there. People are gonna laugh at that. They're gonna remember that. Number one, I've got a thing on my size. My side is my size, and I have a big giant melon with a big giant beard. I look like a lumberjack, so people remember that. Uh, it really is a problem when you network a lot because two years later, people come up to you. They remember my name. They remember me, and I'm like, yeah, you know, I, do, yeah. I, do, I kind of remember your face. <laughs> but be short and be funny. Yeah. But get your value proposition in there because I used to be funny, but with no value proposition. So now I'm like content ninja. Everybody laughs, and then I go, I can make your, con your content do things that you can. For instance, did you know some fun, kind of fun fact? Did you know if you're trying, if you're going on a first date, there's three things you can do that are going to make sure that that date fails. Now you expect they, they expect me to say success. I say fails. If you want your date to fail, I've got the best three ways: A, B, and C. Say it real fast. Everybody laughs. They're gonna man. That's unforgettable. Unforgettable. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's for personal networking. Yeah. But but personal networking is great to bounce to vet your your core idea on. I mean, it really is. Again, because of the same thing, you got to look in their eyes. You got to see what what clicks, right? Then you can take that and put that onto all your other stuff. But it's a great it's a great trial field. It's a great way to see what other people are saying. And yeah. this one woman stood up. She said, "I'm a life coach. I help women who are just ready to make big steps." Well, that just kind of I at least said, date relationships, career, and self-confidence. Well, mm. one of the women came up to me afterwards, she goes, I need to contact you. I struggle with self-confidence. I was like, I'm so glad I said that word. I didn't even really like, <laughs> think much about it. Then yeah. even, and that, it could probably be more, I should probably even have a more succinct thing than that. But 
it was just showed me like, wow, you know, just one word I just kind of said, but it resonated with somebody. In the audience. Well, you're so far ahead of most people that you even have the instinct that you needed to do that. That most people don't do that. They're don't like, don't, they don't feel like they need to say anything different. Oh. They're like, I just need to stand up and say my, I do this and I do this. And oh yeah, I also do this and I do this and I do this. And I mean, you're so in, deep into the this and then the next person gets up. Right. It's lost. Right. Especially if there's more than one. Insurance people are like this because they all stand up and say the same thing and there's 12 of them at every networking group. Mm -hmm. So all yeah. that said, we'll, we'll, we'll pull that back into email marketing. That's where you, you that where in, in a networking group is your trial by fire. That's where you're you're vetting your stuff. You're you're putting it through the paces. Once you've tried it and it works, you take your gold out of the refiner's fire and you come back into your email marketing. And then that's where you're putting this back out there. And email marketing is great to say things like, I was talking to a guy yesterday. He was telling me how his daughter's five and he wished he had more pictures of her when she was four. That whole email is all about kids under five. Right. Um, or he was talking about he has three kids and he realized he woke up and realized one day that his youngest is five. And because he's the youngest, he didn't get as many pictures as the first one did. And so he's lost kind of a lot of moments. That's what I'm going to help you do. Here are the things A, B, C, D, E, right? So you want to set that hook. If, you know, one play is to go, I'm going to, I'm going to teach you how to do what I do. If you spend 10,000 hours doing what I do, you'll be as good as me. Here's how you do it. We resist that because we go, I don't want to teach them what I do because I'll learn how. No, they're not. <laughs> they won't. If you're an expert in anything, very few people can learn how to do it. Well, that's what I've done with my emails to date is give them something, three or four points about uh, to help them with their own photography, mm -hmm. but they'll never catch up to where I'm at. Right, 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 right. And you can even say at the bottom, if you're like a lot of my customers, you've been trying to figure this out for a long time, these tips will help you. But if you're ready to just have somebody, a pro come in, contact me. I'll give you 20% off the first session just to try me out. Click here to purchase. Yeah. Um, then I'll put your, your, your testimonials. If you're talking to people who are trying to take their own pictures, you want testimonials of people who were trying to take their own pictures and finally hired you. Well, everybody's yeah. trying to take their own pictures. Yeah, that's not true. Because that's not true, though. That's that's not true. It's not. Pro professional no, you portraits? Just mean, you just mean everybody takes pictures. Every, I have well, so how, what are you going to say is going to be different than that? Oh, it's, it's amazing what's different. I've, I taught a class I taught a class at the, in Lakeway at the library mm -hmm. on iPhone photography made easy. I had more people than they ever thought were coming. And they all brought their iPhones. Yeah. And, they, and, and, we, and we took their pictures, and they, they all learned how to take pictures. Because they had to spend six hundred dollars, and many, some of them didn't know how to get the phone, the pictures out of the phone. <laughs> yeah, no, we talk, my mom, you, like, you're I'm not like, talking to people uh, that are your age. I'm no, no, no. I, I, my age. I know yeah. people my age who don't know how to do that. Uh, so yeah, I'm, 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 I'm,
that's a separation that you want to have present in your in everything you say. These are the core. This is a core idea. That's why again we go back to this core conversation audit. What is your core conversation? Hey Bob, I know you came to me for this. There's another tactic that I've tried recently. And okay. I haven't. It hasn't succeeded, but I haven't figured it out yet. And that is uh, trying to, to uh, use the fact that people are taking their pictures on their smartphone, mm -hmm. and they're taking more pictures than ever before. Yeah. But they're not great. Mm -hmm. I retouch pictures, and I make them look great. Oh, okay. So there's well, there's another element. So you've it's got another, level A, another, B, and C. A lowest level is I teach you just how to take better pictures on your camera. Level B is I'll make those pictures look better than you can. Yes. Level C is you hire me to take your pictures. Yes. So you got three levels of engagement. Yes. That's right there out of the box. Yes. Your customers just told you, essentially, you know. But yeah, so that's your that's your conversation. You know, I'm, I'm helping you capture moments. Whether I'm teaching you a class to take your own pictures, or I'm taking the pictures you make of, of that you love, but you know could look better in the back of your mind. You know, now now, what I just did there is I called into now we're talking going back to your thing too, the thing that clicks in their mind. When you're talking to somebody, you go, you've probably taken how many, 10,000 pictures with your camera? And even the best ones, the one you love, the ones you share all the time, you know probably some of those could look better, right? Some people are going to go yes, some people are going to go no. What did they just do? They self-identified. They identified themselves, yes, I'm a potential client. So once I know that works in a networking setting, I'm looking in their eyes, now I know it's going to work in copy. So then in my copy, in my email, this is for all of you who have that famous picture, you know, who want it to look better. If you want your pictures to look better, dot, 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 they're going to open that email. I had a, uh, I talked to a client. My client said they want, I want my picture to look better. That's a great, uh, because it sounds like the beginning of a story, right? I'm going to click that. That whole email is going to be about that. Testimonial, I hired uh, Hey Paparazzi. And I couldn't believe how much better they made for a nominal fee. I couldn't believe it. And these are pictures I'll have now for the rest of my life. I can print these off, give them to my family, you know, these kind of things. Put them on your social network. Sure, sure, sure. But they're even good for print because I think something in the back of everybody's mind is these are fine on, on Facebook. But, man, if I tried to print these out one time, they were awful. So there's another value proposition for you. If you've ever tried to print out your own pictures and they look bad, this class is for you. This service is for you. And then that's a value proposition for you at the end of the class, too. Hey, she taught you how to take these, but it, for attending this class, you're going to get 20% off this service. You take all your pictures, get the ones you love the best, and you look, give me a money-back guarantee. I'll retouch them. If you don't like them, you don't pay. I, whatever. I'm pitching stuff right now. But you see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So these, now all that is copy. Every bit of that is copy. You're building web pages. You're doing email marketing. You're pushing from the email marketing to those landing pages. You're doing that from your social media. Um, you're taking pictures of your class. Just take a quick panoramic little video of your class as they're sitting there. Do a little selfie. I like to do a selfie across my face at the class and have everybody wave because that tells a story just in a snapshot. Teaching a class. Oh, he teaches classes. If I don't, I don't read a single word of your copy, I know you teach classes, right? See? So all that goes into this hopper of ideas all down to the final idea of buy from me. What most of us do is we have a wide funnel, and it kind of goes here, and that's it. That's as far as we get them down. We don't take them down to a buy decision. That's what I've done so far. That's it. So, so you you've got your wide ideas. You need to define those down a little more. So more. So here's here's the reason I brought this back. So you you may have wondered. So can you see this? Can you read this? Twenty percent. So does that bring anything to mind? Eighty twenty rule. Eighty twenty rule. So. Couple of interesting facts about that. A guy named Pareto, Pareto, it's called the Pareto Principle because the guy who found it uh, was called Pareto. Now, what's interesting about it is somebody else from Harvard found this guy's study and started extrapolating that. That's why it became popular about 20 years ago. But this guy, 105 years ago, actually, no, it was 1890, so it was 120 years ago, 1895. He's in his garden, he notices. That 20% of his peas produced 80% of his intake from his crops. So he started thinking about that. Then he noticed something else had obeyed the same principle, and he began to extrapolate that. Now, he never 
he never really did anything much with it. He just made the observation. This guy was reading his stuff and came out with the Pareto principle, which is 80-20 rule. And here's the beauty of an 80-20 rule. Either one of you play golf? Have you played golf? Okay. So golf is hard. The reason golf is hard is you're taking a little white ball and a, a relatively, even though the strike surface has gotten much bigger over the years, it's still relatively small. A very small strike surface, controlling that strike surface over a wide arc and a lot of body movement. And then you've got a contact area. You have a contact area that is about the size of a pea. That's about the size of your contact area. And then you're controlling that ball over hundreds of yards of flight and trying to get it to land within about 100 yards. That's why golf is so hard. So he, my golf coach asked me a question one day, which fascinated me. He said, how many of your balls, that like you hit 100 balls, how many of them land where you want them to go? I was like, about five. He said, how many balls do you think a professional golfer out of 100, how many of his hit? Just viscerally, don't 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 make an assumption based on what I just asked you. Just just viscerally, what comes out of your mind? Professional golfer out of hundred balls, how many of his hit where he wants them to hit? Just the first thing that comes to your mind. Eight percent. Five. Five percent. Yes. But he's worked so hard on his misses. My misses are like this. His misses are like this. So number one, where he's aiming to is a much smaller area than I'm aiming because of his work. And when he misses, he's much closer to his mark than I am. So that's what value proposition does for you. Right now, when you go photographer, everybody in the county is going, oh, I like photographers. I like pictures. Photographer is probably a, maybe the most watered down term that has been affected so much by our current generation and how they do media. It's probably the most watered down idea as far as what it was 20 years ago and what it is now. Maybe, that's an interesting contention that I would be interested in, in pursuing, but I think it's probably pretty safe. 20 years ago, what did you have to do to be a photographer? What do you have to do now? Yeah, you don't want to produce a high quality image that's printable. Look, the front, the two images on the front of my website were taken with a, with a phone. On my website, they're good enough to use on a website. So. What I'm getting at here is that my battery is low. Um, I am going to go ahead and plug in. Yeah. Um, when you speak to people, you're telling them something. Even if you think you have your message controlled, they still have a perception that they take away from it. And that's why you want to understand what your customers are thinking. Because if you don't, then you're leaving it up to them to define your value proposition. That's a dangerous place to be. You're totally not in control of what happens in your marketing at that point. So when you don't do that, when you control your value proposition and do so by first interviewing your customers and understanding what they think, then you begin to speak back your benefit delivery. I've always called it benefit delivery. What benefit are you delivering the client versus nuts and bolts? People buy an emotion, benefit delivery. They justify with logic, nuts and bolts. Don't give them the nuts and bolts first. Give them the, the emotion first. So when you begin to do all these things, you refine your message. Now what you're doing is you're winnowing down even who you're talking to in the first place. Well, I'm not going to talk to people from Mainer because they're diametrically opposed to the position I want to be in. I don't mean anything about the people who live in Mainer. They're nice people. I, I used to work out there. What I mean is you've already picked your demo. By definition, South Austin is not where you want to be. Cedar Park is not where you want to be. So are you going to spend any time in Cedar Park? Nope. Lots of time in Lakeway. Every conversation should have Lakeway in it, literally. Everything you say should have Lakeway in it. A really smart thing might be to go get the, some social profiles. Another nice thing about social media, you can silo your message based on your profile name, the Lakeway photographer, the Lakeway family photographer. You can get these social profiles. And there's nothing stopping you from doing it unless somebody else already has it. The one thing you don't want to do is don't, don't go after the name of the profile at 
um, at the expense of the spelling. So if somebody else already has Lakeway Family Photographer, skip it. Don't even try it. Don't go L-K-W-Y unless they're just really weak. If, they, if they've posted five posts on Twitter and they've done nothing on Instagram, then yeah, own it. But you need to slam dunk it. This is what you have to do. So I'll give you a perfect example. Somebody else has frontburnmarketing.com. Okay. I have frontburnmarketing.net. But I like the name so much I was willing to deal with the agony of not having .com. So what my strategy has been is to just bomb the internet with content. I'm going to produce content that this other person is not going to be willing to do. So when front bar marketing comes up, especially local to here, they're going to see my stuff. Now, the second step that I've done is I've branded myself Kyle Bailey Austin. If you search Kyle Bailey Austin online, you don't even have to bracket it. You don't even have to put quotation marks around it. You're going to get all my stuff. If you search the Kyle Bailey, you're going to get all my stuff. So if I brand, if I personally brand myself well, which I feel like I've probably done, on now on YouTube, it's even more dominant. If you just search Kyle Bailey on YouTube, all my testimonials, I mean, all my tutorials and everything come up. And But that's personally branded. I put those concepts out there. So in Lakeway, you can own those concepts. If somebody owns one close to you and you can get a spelling close to it, if they're, now if they're strong, don't even try it. That's not a fight you even need to have. Just get a different concept and own that one. Is this social profile something that you search on Google? Or you search it on the profile you want. So if you want a Twitter profile, you just go to Twitter, go to Lakeway Family Photographer, and if there's not one, you get that. Go to Instagram, Lakeway Family Photographer. If it's not there, you get so that. So I'm changing my name? No, this is just a separate set of profiles. Okay. You, you, have, you profile. would have several? Yeah. So, so you would have Hey Paparazzi, and you would have Lakeway Photographer. Mm -hmm. Yep. And so Lakeway. you have more than your own, What you're doing is you're owning the keyword. You're owning the keyword through the social profile. Because one of the things that people don't realize, Hey Paparazzi, some people that don't understand that, every time your name pops up, you, you have no punch. You have no memory. Because I don't understand what it is. If I don't understand it, my mind's going to back burner it. And it's going to then go, even if I do click through, I'm going to put your name aside for a moment. Then I'm going to read your post. But look at the value I've lost. Let, hey, Paparazzi doesn't connect at Lakeway Family Photographer. So I can end around that problem, and I can go Lakeway Family Photographer and own that social profile. And then everything I post on that, now I brand everything. Hey, Paparazzi, see? All my images are branded Hey, Paparazzi. But... Every post says Lakeway Family Photographer. So who's going to respond to that? People who want a family photographer or who are thinking about it or know somebody. See, all that just bing, bing, bing connects. In my mind, it makes perfect sense. I can, I can file that away. I know where to, I put it. And I know what I put there. That's what you want. Again, value proposition, problem you're solving. See, what I mean by systemic is it truly is systemic. It comes out of everything you do, out of every pore of your business being it's coming out okay let's get back through a little a few more of these um more tracking could cost you more money that's what it comes down to mailchimp is probably the most effective email marketing platform constant contact has made a big push but they're kind of slacking now because i think they're realizing that's not a hill they want to climb uh, but they made a really big push in a small business a few years ago and we're putting a lot of money into getting in front of people uh, which they're not doing as much now. Uh, they really back off most of that. Uh, it's completely dependent on copy. I mean, without good copywriting, the best thing you can do if you're doing email marketing is have a pro look at your stuff a couple times a year. Have a pro just just give them five or six emails and have them like what I do for my clients. I'm not pitching. I'm just telling you what I do. What I do for my clients is I'm gonna go tell me your verticals. And who you're selling to, what are the problems you solve? And number one, if you can't tell me that, that's a problem. So then we go, give me the six, five or six core emails you send. And if you don't know that, that's a problem. So then if you don't even know that, we're still going to get, give me the six emails that you send most common, the types of email that you send most common. Then I'm going to take those and I'm going to do the same thing I told you about before is I'm going to do a screen capture video, and I'm going to do a consult consultation on those, tell you the elements you need, 
and then uh, kind of reverse engineer that into uh, testimonials. I mean, uh, uh, something you can use, kind of a roadmap to what to do better next time. I've got some of these tutorials online. Um, if you email me at the end, I'm going to put my number up here. If you text me, I'll make sure and email you the uh, uh, resource page when I have all that built. So you live and die by open and click through rate. You know that everything has to be relevant. That goes back to value proposition. If you're basing everything on your value proposition, then uh, you're going to be fine. Your email marketing has to optimize for mobile or die. I mean, it's, it's that simple. Um, Emails, you're not going to get punished the way Google is punishing sites with email. So what that means is you're not going to get deranked because email doesn't rank. Side note, you can use everything you've ever put out on email as pages on your website as long as you're not using that anywhere else. It won't be duplicate content. But if you're writing good emails, you should pull some of that and put it on your website. Use them as blog posts. A lot of people just use their blog posts as their email content. That's another thing. Blog posts are more general and educational, though, so it's not going to be as as uh, action driven as a good email can be. But what you can use as your blog is part of it. You can use like a hundred words of your blog and dot 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 read more. That's going to get you a click out to your website, and then go into whatever you're trying to get done with that email. Check your site on mobile. Go check it again. <laughs> How big well, is your? Can say that, yeah. Uh, I use uh, Mailchimp, and they do. I optimize for mobile. That's great. Give you a way to check it. Sure, that's great. Yeah, I mean, I'm telling you, man, Mailchimp for the money. I, I don't know if there's anything better out there. It's outstanding. It really is. Um, get rid of your slider. Um, oh yeah. This is optimizing for mobile. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll tell you why in a minute. And that's on your website. That's on anything. If you've got a slider or a landscape shaped image, get rid of it. Yeah. Because you look, put it on an, an easy test for this is look at it on Instagram. Take that image and go post it on Instagram, and that's the way it looks on mobile. Well, I'm not even on Instagram. Got to get there. <laughs> Especially, listen, okay. I, for emotional stuff, Instagram is the king. It is the king or but queen. Do you, can you click to? I mean, I mean, it's just images, right? Or you can do it though. Where they it's concept. It mm, not on each image. It's a problem. That's a problem with Instagram. Okay. That's why you have to have, a, have an optimized profile. Your profile has to be out because that's where you get your link from. Now, on Instagram, we're getting hyper agreeing more again, but that's okay. Um, on Instagram, what you want to do is core concepts, value proposition, stories, uh, selfies, selfie videos. People love videos. I'm going to tell you something I did that blew my mind because I got a couple hundred followers out of it. Is I started, you know, Shark Tank? Yeah. Okay. I started shooting a short little video when the people would walk in like the new the new person right oh. i would well what instagram does oh it's brilliant it's brilliant i didn't know they did this i didn't know it did it when i started shooting the video but basically you've got about a 10 second video so you shoot it and then you stop so i shoot like two or three seconds and then walking in then i'll figure out some place where there's some catalyst moment i'll shoot that three or four more seconds and then i'll shoot the end whether they got a deal or not and then I just do a couple hundred words of evaluation, my thoughts on it. I'm a huge Shark Tank fan. Mm -hmm. I also love the product. You're shooting Shark Tank. Mm -hmm. Oh. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. I and shoot so that's just Cowboy it. Games. I shoot the Cowboy Games, the significant plays in the game. And uh, people respond really well to that. So I'm not saying you could do that with life coaching, but rom coms, relationship movies. The Bachelor. The Bachelor. Yes. <laughs> but you know your audience. If that's your audience. I mean, you know, I mean, kind of my take, I mean, like, my, my brand is, like, women that look great on the outside, they're a mess on the inside. I'm telling you, man. I'm going <laughs> to tell you. I dated a girl for a while, and she, it was, it was either Bachelor or the Bachelorette, and it was like, somebody has to see that these people are just, yeah. I mean, it's a dump truck fire they're inside crazy. of them. They would just, it would be a fun <gasps> way to, like, kind of sure. comment on sure, and, sure, yeah, sure. just. Yeah. yeah, three things to do, not on a date. All three of these things. All of these things just happen, right? <laughs> but, but anyway, okay. So, but yeah. but that's not, that's just to kind of engage people to like kind of get your personality out there. It's not necessarily no. Like, no. no. Okay. Think about what you just did. How popular is Bachelor Bachelorette? No, it's still on after all these years. Well, so, right, yeah. but what does that mean? Are they just getting their personality out there? No, they're building a following. They've got a siloed following. You say Bachelor Bachelorette, Dancing with the Stars. Not American Idol anymore because it's dying. I know. 
but uh, the voice. Each one of those people are personas. So a little inside human behavior idea. So I love Lucy. Four characters. Um, Seinfeld, four characters. Friends was different because I had six. That was an outlier. But in, but probably in Friends you have four basic characters, and some of them are overlapping. So these ideas here, the point is there's you know the, in the Myers Briggs there's four personality types. So you you end up with these things that people are responding to, right? So you you build personas on that. Who are your personas? Are they a George? Are they a Jerry? Are they a Lane? Are they a Kramer? Are they a Lucy? Are they a Ricky? Are they a Fred? Are they an Ethel? Because none of those characters overlap, you know. So the, these are ideas. And so you're building your, who are you talking to? That's what it's about. And Instagram is a great way to kind of get that. Now there's, there's starting to be a lot of noise on Instagram, but you can still use it. So what you do on Instagram, the strategy behind Instagram right now, it's going to evolve. That's why you need to get on it because they're on the train to make it more relevant for businesses. They're doing that. That's an active thing that's happening right now. They've already rolled out brands with links. They've already rolled out sponsored posts. Okay, this is all very recent. So get on Instagram. Here's the current strategy. So core ideas, images with words on them. Quote images are huge on Instagram. When you say with words on, you mean like you put text on them? Just follow my account. Get on Instagram and follow my account. I'm the Kyle Bailey. But you'll see exactly what I, but I'm doing exactly what I'm telling you to do. And I'll tell you the truth. I've only been on it for about a month. I haven't sold anything on Instagram yet. And I, everybody's learning. This is all early curve, okay? So, but this is what core ideas, core value propositions, lots of ooey gooey stuff, lots of warm and fuzzies. Right? But everybody, you got to figure out how you attach your warm and fuzzies. Now, both of you are in perfect position to do that, but you're not selling plumbing supplies. Plumbing supplies got to have to figure out how to attach warm and good fuzzy to that, you know? Right. And so, what, uh, so you do all that, but then uh, you're going to say, um, you know, for my latest class, we're launching that boot camp next week. Click the link in the in my profile and you have a half off. So then you're changing your link. See? And then if you're smart, you're putting Google Analytics, you're putting trackable phone numbers and all kinds of stuff on those pages because you want to know how many people are clicking through to it. Some people use have you heard of a bit.ly link? Yeah. Yeah. Don't ever use a bit.ly link. And here's why. Number one, you don't need it anymore. Google Analytics is going to tell you where you came from. What the strategy you want to use is don't send people to a, pay, a page that has a lot of other traffic to it. If it's a page you need to use for a lot of traffic, just make a copy of it on your website. De-index it. Don't let Google index it because then you'll get in trouble for duplicate content. But de-index it. Have a second page and send everybody to that page. Then, it, you know, everybody that came to that page came from Instagram. Okay? So, but Google also is going to tell you where your traffic came from. You know, you go to your page, you measure the traffic on the page, and then you say, um, on this date, how many people came from which source? And it's going to tell you. It'll break it down for you. It's harder to do, but the easiest thing to do is just silo the relationship between Instagram and that page. That's the easiest thing to do. But that's the current strategy. So value proposition, warm and fuzzies, sale. Like, let's say one out of five. One out of five of your posts is trying to sell something. But the, the value proposition for the sale has to be in the image. Repeat it in the comments. Back it up with hashtags. Don't put the link in the in the thing. You can't even copy and paste the link yeah. from the comment. So I thought you could do that, and you can't. So that means links are useless in any of the, the whole thing. Uh, you have to have it in your profile. Like a girl yesterday, a friend of mine, she, uh, she does nutrition, and she put up this thing, hey, click the link above to do blah, blah, blah. There is no link above because you're looking at this all this in real time. You have to say link in your profile. Click the link in my profile and you'll get it. And so you change the link? Mm -hmm. Based on what the outcome you want. You want your static all the way to your fallback position is your home page. But you're, 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 think about what you're trying to do. You're trying to measure activity on Instagram and you're trying at the end of the day to sell stuff. So how are you going to do that? You're going to have to get them to click and you, can, you can't send them to your home page when you have them click. So I'm, I'm ignorant about what, what, what would I come up, what would they go to? I mean, that's my only... What are you selling? Coaching sessions, let's say, or a workshop. Okay. Well, on what? On my website. No, no, no. 
What's the value proposition? Oh, uh, a dating workshop. But what's the value proposition? If I'm buying a dating workshop, once I pay for it, I'm done. I'm not even going to go because I bought a dating workshop. That's the value proposition that okay, you're telling me right I, now. Um, um, what am I at the end of the day, end of the workshop? I'm walking out and I'm going to go. You're going to feel confident. And feel confident. In your dating. I'm going to feel authentic. Probably I'm going to have a better date, better relationship. Okay. Um, so then that's what you're selling. Your, your quote image is that. Your, your line in your profile goes to a page for that class. See? That's on my website. Yes. Okay. Did I create a new page on my website? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. Okay. I would yeah. create a new page on the website. And, mm -hmm. then and you don't want to pass to that page from anywhere else. You don't want that to link from the home page. You don't want to link from Facebook. Path, it's a it, lot easier than it sounds. Okay. okay. Yeah. A lot easier than it sounds. Okay. Yeah. But yeah, so uh, yeah, so what that does for you, if you don't do that, then what happens is you have no measurement on that traffic. Now, what a Bitly link is and does is it measures every click, and it will tell you these many people clicked on this link, and you know that link was only in Instagram. That gives you the measurement. The downside of it is it's Bitly, it's not pretty, and it doesn't have the value proposition in the title. Mm -hmm. Which your link, if you set your link up right, it's going to have the value proposition in the title. Three ways to a better date class is going to be your link. What's your website? Life Coach Amanda. Okay, lifecoachamanda.com forward slash three, three steps to a better date. Uh, that my value pro proposition is in my URL. So I get back up of the proposition that I already had, which was I'm gonna have a better date. I'm gonna have more, more confidence, more authenticity. In this dating class, click the link that says dating class. I'm gonna go to the page about the dating class. This all feels very unified, right? Mm -hmm. So, then now, if you're if you're pushing that on several channels, you just want to have. I mean, I know it's cumbersome and labor, laborious to have different pages for different ones. There's different ways to do that. The best way to do it is just do different pages and de index them. Don't let Google crawl them because you will get kicked for duplicate content if Google crawls them. Okay. okay. So it's a real easy thing in WordPress. You just click a button. It says don't index yeah. this page. That's it's real easy. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but the point is, you want to be able to measure this traffic. Now, now, you know, at the end of the day, measuring the traffic is not as important as, important as making a sale. So don't not do it because you can't measure the traffic. Right, right. Set up the sale and get it going. Because right. at the end of the day, people are going to tell you, I saw you on Instagram. But Google is a lot more right. ubiquitous. People will just say, I saw you online. Oh, was this my Instagram campaign? You know. So you want to be able to measure that. Let's jump through some more of this. Um, so we've gone into mobile. Check your site on mobile. Always check everything you do on mobile. Every single campaign you do, check it on mobile because more than half of the people that you're talking to are going to view that on mobile. Okay? Um, how big is your conversion text? Uh, what this means is what's the key decision you want them to make? Um, can they go to that page and go bing, bing, bing and make that decision? Because some of your audience does that. Others of your audience is going to be more um, research intensive. They're going to be engineer types, I like to call them. Engineer types are not going to make, they're the, they're the outlier. It's like, have you, have you all seen The Departed, the movie? Oh, okay. Well, evidently there's this quote that Freud said. I don't know if it's true, but they quote it in the movie. What did Freud say about the Irish? They're the only people that can't be analyzed. They don't respond to analysis. So engineers are much like this. If you're talking to an engineer, they make decisions different than most people. They're almost purely research driven, and they will make it. They'll make a no decision based on the fact that you didn't let them research. They may not be exactly what they want to buy, but if you don't give them the ability to research, they'll make a no decision. So what you want to do is you want to have a two stage thing. You want to have Bing 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 ability for people to go, yes, this looks like exactly what I want. Bing, I'm going to buy. And then you also want to back that up with deeper text on the page that gives them the ability to research and verify your value, give them helpful links, all that kind of stuff. But just understand your audience and who's buying from you. Engineers probably, I don't know, engineers might buy dating service, thinking about the fact that I've seen engineers just interact with people and it's pretty bad. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, yeah. Well, you always know if an engineer found a wife, she really loves him. They know, man, they know. It's There's no like, I thought he was like this. And he's like, no, you know exactly what he's thinking. Um, so conversion text, the size of it's going to be important. Because on mobile, you have such a limited frame uh, for interaction, okay? So make sure it's above the fold. They need to be able to make a decision above the fold. Yeah. So uh, understand that above the fold? 
Okay, so that's really important. Uh, at least something that gets them deeper in the page. Read more below, something. If, if, if you can't get the decision that high. This is why image size is so important. A lot of websites where they mess up is their image is nice and big on, on desktop. Well, it resizes down, but down, I, a lot of times I'm, I'm doing more than one fold of scroll and I'm still on the same image. That's a problem, you know, because you're pushing me so far down on the page before I even start reading any of your messaging and I can't make a decision yet. I literally can't make a decision. Even if I go to the page hot and ready to buy, I can't. That's a bad place to be. Um, sliders are bad on mobile for this reason. Sliders are almost always landscape. Um, instead of postage stamp, you want postage stamp instead of that. So uh, let's let's jump into this. I'll show you some changes I made on this site that'll illustrate exactly what I'm uh, getting at. Assuming I'm still hooked up to your Wi-Fi. This computer is so fast. You the slider. Where? I know, I know. Well, I know. <laughs> so, this happens every time I give this presentation. Uh, the thing is, I'm on the fence about whether or not I'm going to just completely redo that website. Oh, uh, yeah. And, and I have a slider, too. Yeah, right yeah, now. yeah. I should have said that already. I have a slider, by the way. <laughs> um, let's take this to I'll full screen. Where. So let's go over. This is William French remodeling. So before, let's see if I can find this. I'm going to show you what this looked like before. Okay, this is what it looked like before the changes. Bigger. Oh, come on. What are you doing? Okay, there we go. So this is what it looked like before. So you can imagine, number one, here's a very, very big conversion tip. People like pretty. A lot of times pretty sucks. This is one of those cases. Never write in italics. Never. Never put italics on your website. It's pretty, but you can't read it. If you look at how you're perceiving it right now, your mind has probably picked up a lot of these standard font words. It's not picking these up. Little psychological fact, uh, if, if, you're, if your text is hard to read, people subliminally will make the decision that you're hard to deal with. Okay, That just happens. We know that to be true through research. Okay, So uh, tell me what that, what's that image about? The fact that you couldn't go like that is a problem. You should be able to go bing, that's what it's about. What this guy tried to do is he tried to combine an overview of everything they do in one image. And that's a problem. You know, it's too much. You get back to that muddled thing. Um, let's look at some other problems. Um, this had the floating. Uh, we got rid of that. Um, here's a really good one. Contact us now. Should you have any questions about our products, feel free to contact us using the form on the right. How engaging is that? What I want to do then is I want to have a contact form that gives some specificity, gives the reader some ability to indicate specifically what they want. Okay? So keep that in mind. Now, what, I saw this, I'm like, seriously? What? What does that make you want to do? If anything, it makes me want to go shop at a carpet store. If anything. But really, it doesn't make me want to do anything. I don't like it. I don't know anybody that looks like it. Oh, yes, that's exactly what my house to look like. Right there. Right. Now, this is great. These are called social uh, 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 social proof badges. Right. What happens when you see a, an image on a website that you recognize from daily life is you attach value to that. You attach trust. Whether you like to or not, it happens. It's not a conscious decision. Really good example of this is the, the reason you started seeing, um, there was a time in our lives when you started seeing uh, credit card images everywhere. I don't know if you remember this, back in the mid-90s. What they discovered is, they did studies and they're like, okay, we're going to put people in a room with the credit card image and without. They're like, 
and people bought like 50% more when the images were present. Then they're like, okay, that's because they use those cards. So then they went cash only. People still bought 50% more when their images were present, even using only cash. So what that tells us is that people attach trust to those tags. These are also called trust tags a lot of times. Uh, so these are all the image. These are people we buy from this remodeling company. We buy from these these people, but it's also a trust tag thing that tells you you can trust us because we deal with these people. Is there uh, is there any uh, limits to what that to prevent us from using logos? Um, you know, but if you're a small business, the, if you're a remodeler, the likelihood that a uh, remodeling supply company is going to want you not to use their image is pretty low. Um, if you're a photographer and you want to use, you know, Sherwin Canon. Williams paint. Canon. Canon. Well, all you got to do is just tell them you use Canon lenses. Talk about Canon lenses a lot. They're not going to want you to take their image no. out. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, that's likelihood. I'm not guaranteeing that, obviously. Yeah. Okay, now let's look at the difference between this and what we're rolling with now. So I'm going to do a little bit of A, B here. Okay, here's another one. Um, so we put the – this is a standard footer. You remember I told you about a footer earlier? Can you see this well enough? All right, there we go. So standard footer. This is standard footer. There will be other changes later. But this is what, what I call a standard footer. Contact us page. These are helpful links. Contact information. Google really wants this. It's called name, address, and phone number. So this gives you local uh, significance. Without this, you're going to have a hard time ranking. Okay? These are your helpful links. They like to see an overview of your website in your footer on every page. That gives people more ability to use your website. Then you contact us. Page. Name, email address. What home services are you looking for? Okay? Now you can't interact with this. This is an image. So now let's go back to the top. And then we're going to A, B this thing, okay? So Bing to Bing. Now you see how much difference there is here? Oh. I don't know, man. This is one thing that drives me a little nuts about Max. Is they're not real good. Okay, this is better. So now, let's see if I can pull this image up. Yeah, so there's this. This is where we are now. There's still more changes to be made, but it's this versus this. You see the difference? So the, the biggest thing is, number one, gigantic tactical mistake is you could not click on that big nice image of a somewhat nice image of a kitchen you couldn't click on that and go anywhere now you can now the long-term strategy is kitchen bath hardwood floors and carpet that's our four uh, nails we're going to hang stuff on there's other stuff we do but you don't want to be exhaustive you want to be core who what do your core people buy from you now what happens on mobile is the first thing I did is looked at mobile and how mobile was stacking our images. They're stacking them vertically. So this is an Instagram sizing. And uh, we're going to have our four images. So hardwood four is going to be one of them. We're working on the image on that. And so that's going to be replaced with that. This is going to go away completely and be a, a little, it'll be Instagram width, but not Instagram height. It'll just be checking out our special offers, right? We're going to move our trust tags for house and Yelp into a band right up here, right below the images. So that's gonna be super high emphasized. It's all the way down in the footer right now, it's the wrong place for it. Yelp and House are their two biggest referral engines. Why are you gonna put them up way down in the footer? So again, understand what the customer wants, what, the, what is the customer doing on your site, and let's help them do that thing. Let's don't make them work for it. Let's don't, make, let's don't put it down there, let's put it up. So when a customer goes to our site on mobile, they're gonna see kitchen modeling, bathroom, modeling, nice, big, beautiful images, one, two, three, four. And each one of those is going to punch through to a page on that subject. That page will have verification. This is why you can trust us. This is the communities we're in. Here's some testimonials. Here's the. Then you go down into this is the granite we use and where we source it from. Because what am I doing then? When I'm talking about types of granite, what am I doing? Am I selling on emotion or am I selling on nuts and bolts? 
That's the vote. Exactly. So on, they, they're making a decision on a motion. Now they want to know, I've made my emotional decision. Now I want to justify with logic, right? And so uh, that gives me the ability to do that. This is the type of granite. We use these type of fasteners. We use this type of wood because it's better than those other kind of wood. We don't use particle board. That's a big thing that people want to know. We don't use particle board in any of our cabinets. We use all copper sinks, whatever it is. Premium materials at good prices. That's what we're about, okay? So this is uh, what I'm talking about with mobile, and we've talked through a lot of uh, uh, conversion elements. This is called a Shareholic plugin. Uh, this is another reason to use WordPress. When you put this plugin in, you put it in, you click a couple buttons, and you're done. Um, and it helps you. What it is, this is a social proof counter. That's what I call it. This is, this is many other people have liked this page. Yeah. I always wondered if that's good or bad. I mean, sometimes I always, like, always see something like, oh, only like two people are running. Yeah, you well, know? here's the secret. You, what here's is the that secret sauce. Count? Is that what the counter is? Uh -huh. yeah. People yeah. who have liked Well, really what it is, is it's how many times it's been shared. And I'm in, I'm in charge of that. I'm sharing it. <laughs> see? So I'm sharing it. On every profile, I can. This is what this is where strategy and under, having somebody who understands how to do things comes in. So what I've done is I've built out profiles. So I've built out home service profiles. I've built out um, just general service profiles. I've built out demo profiles, and I share this on all of those. And on those, different people have liked them and stuff. Every time it gets interacted with on social, it gets a count. So if I share it, it gets a count. If I share that, it gets retweeted. It gets another count. If I share it, that gets retweeted, somebody else likes it, it gets three. If five people like it, it gets eight. Makes sense. It makes sense. I'm just still I'm, I still have a question about sure. it. Is the uh, so uh, on my site, mm -hmm. although although I haven't done anything to put it there, the, the site allows me to put those tags there. With if I sh if they're shared, would that count? Those, those, that, that's what this plugin does. This plugin is built to show people this content has been shared. That's what this plugin does. Other plugins, they allow you to interact with the social profile, but it doesn't tell you how many people have interacted with it. And, and there's value to you think having social proof. Other people like me have got. Now, there's not a lot. That's yeah. not going to sell me 30 jobs. Yeah, but yeah. there's that little, these are little yeah, things. So. We use soft pastel colors because that's not offensive. It's not polarizing. You know, we use nice big images because small images are harder to look at. We nice some choices up here. Our, our logo is real nice and clear. Right at the top, we got, do you have a rem remodeling question? You can click there before you go any further because somebody might come there and all they have is a question. Do you do these kind of cabinets? They don't want to search. They don't want to dig through. They want to straight to a question, right? Right there's like our Facebook page. Yeah. One of the reasons Facebook is, is so effective is because it's about liking. Now, we've kind of forgotten that because it's seven years old now, effectively. It's really older than that, but in the commonality of use, it's seven years old. We've forgotten what it was like not to like something. I don't know if you remember this when Facebook first came out, but it was like, and some of this is still present, but it's like, my, my cat just died. Like, yeah, I don't like the cat. In fact, your cat just died. But I, I do want to recognize it. But what, is it, what does it mean to like something? That still is present in our mind because we still say it about other things. Yeah, I like that burger place. I don't like that burger place. I really like going to see movies here. I don't like going to see movies here. So that is still present. Just the psychological act of going like our page, there's something pro in our mind about that. There's something positive that we associate. So these are different. All this stuff just piles up. Now, conversely, you go to a site that doesn't have any social links on it. You look at it. You see how your mind responds to it. It's not good. It doesn't. Your mind automatically goes dated. This, per this person's not up to step. And that's negative. Okay? So we are talking about optimizing on mobile. That's what got us to there. Um, we are now going to go back. Let's see. We're going to escape. Did that say? Yeah, there we go. We're going to unmajor screen that. We're going to major screen this. People that are watching on this video are going to have a completely different experience than you guys are having. All they're seeing is me go around on the screen. 
All right, we've checked us out on mobile. We're checking the size. Size is everything. It, 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 it's going to govern all the conversion on the mobile site, okay? Make sure they can make a decision easy. It's even more important than on desktop that they can make a decision easily because if they can't, they're going to bounce and you lose them. Paid search. We're talking about full integrated marketing. So one vector, one vertical of this is paid search. AdWords is the most common version of this. It's complex, it's expensive. There's a long learning curve. It's the best place you should pay somebody. Do not engage on this without paying somebody. Because you're going to pay somebody. You're either going to pay the platform or you're going to pay an expert. Um, I Worst case of this that I've ever seen is I talked to a doctor's office that was spending $3,000 a month on $3,000 a month. Uh, on paid search, and I'm like, okay, what, what's it bringing to you? Oh, I, I don't know. I'm, does, isn't that Google? That's what they said to me. I'm like, oh my gosh. You could have given me that $3,000. <laughs> and then two years, $72,000. Poof. Gone. It's not Google's responsibility, and they do it, even though it's not their responsibility to tell you how to do it. They do it. They do tell you, do this, don't do that. People don't read that stuff, Okay. Do not get into paid search without paying somebody. I don't even do this. You don't? Nope. I've got a guy who's just the most slam dunk guy out there. That's why I don't do it. Why am I going to climb the hill that he's already climbed? I'm going to let him do it. I bring him into all my consults. He brings me in on content. Okay? Okay. Oh, go ahead. Oh, you can go. Okay. So Google AdWords, that's literally what you see at the top when you do your search. And it says, on the it side also. Buy it. Yeah, it has AdWords. It has AdWords. Yeah. yeah. So I'm going to be the only person, I don't ever click on this. No, you're not the only person. Like, I avoid this. Right. Why? I don't. I just. You don't want to be sold to. I don't want to be sold to like that. Right. But what you don't realize, you, if you start looking, look at those companies who are in the paid search, and you're going to see them down in the organics. It's the same thing. So are you paying you AdWords what, to what do you mean? organic, to be up, up no. high in organics no. also? No, no. But your organic SEO and optimizing of your site will affect your AdWords. It used to not be that way. You could get a page that was horrible and pay Google and they'll place it for you. Now, if you're not, if the customer's not going to have a relevant experience coming from your AdWords to your site, your AdWords are going to cost you a lot more money. They're going to charge you more for that. And it's going to be harder to get ranked highly in, in AdWords, not in organic. But if you're not optimized, you're not ranking in organic anyway. So if you're not if you're not ranking number page one for something, uh, don't do AdWords at all. Don't even listen to anybody who's trying to sell it to you because you're going to pay extra. Does that make Say sense? That again. If um, you are not ranking page one in organic for something, some keyword, doesn't matter what you can do. Purple life coaches, okay, somewhere. Some combination of keywords you need to be ranking page one. And that may sound counterintuitive. I can explain it more deeply in another time. But you need to be ranking page one for something because you need to be relevant to Google. Now, you may have to go long tail to get there, but you could still be there. Okay? So if you're not ranking well, let's right. change that to that. If you're not ranking well organically, in other words, you go to Google, you type it in, you're there for something then don't do paid search because it's going to cost you too much money. It could even double your, your payout per click. Yeah. Google is very serious about the, the user having a good experience on your site. So I would need to work harder to get the organic. You just need to be relevant. It's good content. You know. I don't have that. I just don't know why I'm not. Well, if you don't have title tags, it doesn't matter how good your content is. Okay. Yeah. Your SEO elements have to be in place. If yeah. they're not, yeah. Then that, yeah. Yeah. That probably, not because I do it. If I didn't do this, I would still tell you this. The best place you can spend your money is on getting your content measured. Yeah. Because yeah. from somebody who can do sales, who understands the sales process and how content should be aimed at, who understands SEO and what you need to do to do that, and then understands conversion, what on the page is going to cost somebody to make a move. That's different than sales, okay? So, social media. Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, Pinterest, and Snapchat. Uh, Periscope is moving onto the scene in a big way fast. Um, Reddit is big, but it's in, it's, it's it's its own animal. <laughs> I always tell people, if you, if you, if you have any uh, rosy notion of human nature, don't ever go to Reddit. 
It will totally reveal to you just how jacked up we are. Like things will choose to read. Huh? Listen, it's... <laughs> yeah. The first time I went there, I was like, I, was, I, I went there from an article on Facebook. And I never heard of Reddit. I was like, Reddit? Okay, what's this? Yeah. And you go there, and it's like, okay, I'm out. <laughs> yeah. Um, social media can be a gigantic time waste and a black hole to eat up all your time because there's billions of things to do and what's going to be productive. So you get back to our earlier conversation about value proposition and core conversation. If I know what my core conversation is, then I'm always saying the same things. And if I'm always saying the same things, then my message is discipline. If my message is discipline, I can measure it. And if I can measure it, then I can improve. But in a reverse extrapolation, if I can't, if all those answers are no, if I don't know what my core value proposition is and I don't have my messaging discipline, then what am I measuring? I can't measure anything. But if I put the same message out over a month, then I can measure the response I got. If I didn't get what I wanted, then I can tweak him. So my five steps uh, are develop your strategy, build your strategy, deploy your strategy, measure the results, tweak what you want to change and improve, rinse and repeat. So that goes all the way from your overall strategy to all the way down to whatever your current strategy is on Instagram for the week. All the way. It, it's, have you ever seen those? Uh, I forget what they're called. I need to figure this out because I keep using it. But it's, uh, it's that thing that where you pull it and it stays the same shape. When you push it in, it reduces, but it's all the same shape. The ball stays the same. Have you seen that? It's really cool. This engineer made it, and you pull it, and it literally expands and contracts uniformly. That's the same thing here. This idea, deploy, measure, uh, I mean, build, deploy, measure, tweak, rinse, and repeat. You should be doing that always. For the year, you should have a strategy for the year. I'm going to go up to Lakeway. I'm going to hit these things. I'm going to give away this much free stuff. Out of that free stuff, I'm going to ask for this much business. Then I can measure that. But if you don't have that clear goal, what are you measuring? If I don't know what part of Austin I'm going after, what am I measuring? Any activity then is good. And that's a problem for a lot of people. Because you have a lot of sound and fury, but no rain. Right? So it can be a raging success with a target and a goal. Hyper-focused on message, mixed with community-driven posts. You can't be all about whatever serves you. I learned that this week even more. I'm supposed to know this. I actually wrote this, so I'm supposed to know it. Uh, know your audience, and you really never quit doing this. Because let's say you do a five-year study on your audience. Well, in five years, you're 30 year old or 35. 35 to 40, I think, is a big move. I know it was for me and all my friends, 35 to 40. Because it's the first time age really shows up. You start I get them in the morning, it's like something hurts and there's no reason. Before that, you can always track it to a reason. I went running. I climbed a hill. I played softball. So this hurts. I hit 40 and it's like, ouch, why does that hurt? Oh, no apparent reason. <laughs> Just old. Uh, talk to your audience, man. Ask them open-ended questions. How did you get here? What do you like? What do you not like? How was that for you? You know, what was your process like? What do you fear? Fear is a big deal, man. The more emotional your sale is, the more fear plays a, a part, you know. And the bigger the ask is, if you're asking for a lot of money, fear is a bigger player in it. Talk about those answers. When they give you the answers, this is, again, we're going into um, what – uh, your audience thinks, and you've asked them, then you start talking about that, that goes into your copy. That becomes what you talk about, right? Um, you got to know Facebook ads. If you don't use Facebook ads, you have to treat Facebook like a passive channel, which means you post up just to stay busy. You don't expect anything out of it. Facebook made some big changes this year where they choked down your organic uh, footprint, like massively. I'll tell you on my story to illustrate that, yeah. I have about 4,000 friends now. I used to have 5,000, but I've been winnowing slowly. Uh, that's because back in 2010, when Facebook started becoming relevant for business, I went all in on Facebook. And I just, I'm like, I'm going to get as many Austin friends as I can. That way I'll be more relevant, right? Okay. I used to be able to bank on 10% conversion. 
if you ask me to go get likes for your page, I could get 10% of my audience to like your page. So I could get you 500 likes. All I have to do is go through and ask everybody for likes. I would get 10%. It happened every time. I used to go away from Facebook for an hour. I'd come back, and they back then they maxed out at 99 uh, notifications, so actions uh, that you need to look at, you know. Uh, I, in an hour, I would always max out every time. I would dime it every single time. Now, I can go away for half a day, and I'll have 20. And forget, forget getting people to like the page. I, I'll ask everybody in my audience, and I might get to. That's how much they've choked down. That's how much they've choked because down. Because they they're not seeing the, the Right. They're not going to let you. They're not going to let you talk to all those people. Yeah. Not paying for it. Right. Is now, on the page, let me take you one more step further before we start any questions on it. Now, on business pages, it's even worse. On business pages, if you say anything that looks transactional, they actually hide it. If you say, check out our special offer, buy my program, buy this, click on this link to buy, they will not show that to your audience. That's that's how ridiculous it is. So the idea of an organic channel is gone. It's all pay for play now. With one giant exception. But Facebook ads, they don't guarantee that you're going to get anything. No, but you have to, you with everything, with everything, though, you treat it like what it is. Don't treat it like what it isn't. Don't expect something that it isn't from it. What you're going to get from Facebook ads is exposure. And that's what you want. That's why message is so important. You'll see things like I just put out, uh, I think I talked a little bit earlier about Salesforce and about how they put out a uh, this big program, a pre-roll video on YouTube, spent a lot of money on it, and they didn't brand it. That's an unmet, undisciplined message. And you can't have that on, on anything, really. You shouldn't have an undisciplined message on anything, but especially on Facebook. So if you go on Facebook, you don't want to just say, hey, paparazzi photography. You want to say, hey, paparazzi photography, we give you your moments back. I had two very specific uh, promotions, one for back to school photos mm -hmm. and one for Halloween photos. Mm -hmm. And I did put them on Facebook and I got, I found them, they tell you how many where people saw it. Mm -hmm. It was like three, five. Was this a paid ad though? No. Right. Yeah. No. I didn't know this. Yeah. So that's why. I couldn't figure out why. why Here's why where is Facebook is really valuable. Facebook is an infinitely valuable in split testing your messaging. So if you say family photo value pack, and then you put the very same budget, same everything. So on Facebook, you can dial down to who. So you could dial down to Lakeway. You could dial down to age. I don't want anybody under 20 seeing this. No 18 year olds buying a family pack. Probably you don't want anybody under 30, maybe. I don't know, but I think if you get under 30, you're getting a lot of people that are single or a lot of people who just got married. No, I think you're right. Okay. Think so maybe uh, 35 and over. Women women who are moms. Yeah, 35 and over. Thirty. Let's say 35 to 45. I want 35 to 45 year old women, mothers. I don't think they could do, I don't think they give you mothers. I can't remember. I didn't think so. But in the zip, in the zip code. Sure. Eh, it's more like demo, so Lakeway. Lake, yeah. Plus Right, 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 right. So you can you can limit the area, and then whatever else. It gives you some other options. But then you go, I'm going to put five bucks a day on this. I want to see this many people. Okay. So then you take that message. Don't worry about the budget yet. Just worry about that message. Then take that very same setup, put a different message on it, um, and put something a little more targeted or just a little bit different. Call it family fo photo. Um, Take, in other words, take the value piece off of it because value says discount. You know, uh, take that off of it. See what kind of uh, the um, the best investment for your future memories, something like that. So it talks about you're buying the investment, you're buying the memories, right? Instead of you're buying the cheapness, which value says that. See how that plays with your audience. How much more engagement do you get? Um, three funny tips or three uh, strange. Uh, tips that make your photos better. Uh, when you say something like strange, unexpected, weird, that gets more in conversion. So try that. So try different messages. You're really not even worried about the outcome. What you're worried about is what makes people click on Facebook. Okay? So you can take that and extrapolate that into your other marketing. I really look at I don't look at Facebook as putting dollars in my pocket. I look at them as telling me what the audience will respond to. 
Then the next thing you want to do is raise your budget because there's a, there's a law in um, online paid search, paid anything, uh, that once you reach a certain smallness of budget, then anything past that level and down, you no longer have dollar per. It's much smaller. So to illustrate this, if you have a budget of my doctor client that I, I consulted with, um, he then at one point he changed his budget down to a thousand dollars. And what I told him is, look, at a thousand dollars, you're you're no longer effective. That's wasted money. So why is it wasted money? Well, the top player in your field is paying three thousand to five thousand dollars a month. Okay. So on the field, you have one, two, three. On a search page, you have one, two, three. Then you have like seven over here, so there's 10. The bottom player player is paying 2,000. You're paying 1,000. So you're never going to get on page one. So you're wasting your money. So there's a budget number, and I don't know what that is, but there is a budget number that once you pass below that, your, your effectiveness and your show rate is going to drop way down because other people in your demo might be paying more. That is generally true. There are going to be exceptions, but raise your budget. Because So here's the proof of that for you that will be. So you pay five bucks a day. What happens when you go 10 bucks a day? Do you get more than double? If you get more than double, then you know you're around that number. Does that make sense? So if you get five, you pay five bucks a day, you get 10 interactions. You pay 10 bucks a day, you get 30 interactions. That tells you you're not dollar per. You're not one dollar per, um, what, what was my first number? Five dollars, I get 10. Yeah, so five weeks. So I'm not a dollar for two interactions. I then go to a dollar for three interactions. So that tells me something in there. I'm getting exposure in a higher player field. Mm, okay, so what if I double that? What at 20? Am I getting 100? So that tells me I keep going as long as that graph keeps going up. Does that make sense? Yeah. So as long as I'm getting more exposure than my dollar per, then I keep raising it. That's generally true in paid exposure. If you're paying for exposure, there's some relationship with that going on somewhere. And you just have to figure out what that is for yourself because it's all about the demo you're in. And it's all about the platform you're using. I don't think Facebook is as medieval as Google is in that field um, because you don't have page one relationship, you know, that kind of thing. Facebook is going to make sure your ad gets shown <clears throat> to somebody because they want people to click on it and they want you to buy more stuff from them. Yeah. They click on it, but how many times do they actually? Well, again, remember, it's not, there's value in just the click. Remember, I vary my messaging and I see what my clicks are. Mm -hmm. So the varied message, I changed my message, I got triple the clicks. So you're, okay. So uh -huh. just that tells me that message is better. Wow. Even if I don't get any purchases out of it, I still got message out of, message understanding out of it. So I paid 30 bucks and I learned that this message works better. Now I go take that, put my email marketing, I get triple my clicks and I get purchases out of that. I put it in my SEO copy and I get more purchases out of that. See, that's, that's what I mean. Treat every platform like it is what it says it is. It'll tell you just like you learned that, yeah, they clicked on it, but they didn't do anything. So you learn this probably isn't end of the day effective in my pocketbook, right? But I did. I can vary my message. It's a cheap, cheap, cheap way to vary your messaging and learn what people respond to. Yeah. Put a picture of a puppy on it. See what happens. I'm dead serious. Um, Twitter's noise. Uh, I'll tell you on Instagram. It's a very interesting thing that I learned. Snapchat and Periscope are coming. I'll go back to Instagram now. Uh, what I mean by that is Snapchat and Periscope are both valued in billions with a B. And they don't do ads. So how can they be valued that much? They're not producing revenue yet. So how are they that much? That means people see big, big potential in it. Okay? So there's a reason YouTube just changed their entire model to include streaming, which are way too late on it. They're innovating too late. Um, let's go back to Instagram. Uh, I got on Instagram a month ago through a guy named Gary Vaynerchuk. Gary Vaynerchuk wrote a book called Crush It because he built a wine business on Twitter. Uh, to like $30 million a year just on Twitter. And he teaches you how he did it. Now, it won't work anymore because, because everybody read his book and everybody went on Twitter. And now it's, everybody's trying to crush it, but nobody's crushing it because everybody's there. 
He was at the place nobody was else, else was at. That's the point. So I'll tell you in my own history, uh, for about the last eight months, I've tried to be, I've tried to build uh, some Twitter accounts just to see what the effectiveness of Twitter is to test it. Um, through months and months and hundreds of hours of work, hundreds of hours of work, lots of field testing. I grew my account from about, eh, I don't know, I, I, was, I think I was at 1,500. I'm at like 16, 13 now, so I added about 100. These are all organic. I didn't buy any of these users, okay, these followers. So I went on Instagram in a month uh, through almost no activity, no focus activity because I didn't know what I was doing yet. It's gotten better at the end of the month, but at the beginning of the month, I didn't know what I was doing. I've added already over 150. Now, here's what's very interesting. If I take a picture of the puppy, I put that on Twitter, it gets X interaction, which is very low. Two or three people like it, maybe a retweet. I put that same picture on Instagram, I get a lot more interaction, but here's what's really interesting. I repost from Instagram to Twitter, so my Instagram posts always push through to Twitter. Now, side, on the side is, my Twitter also reposts to Facebook. That doesn't really matter in this case, but it does do it. So, puppy goes on Twitter, gets X interaction. I put the same puppy on Instagram. The when it reposts to Twitter, that post gets more interaction. It's the same on puppy, Twitter. right? Sometimes ten times as much. It's crazy how much I don't. Instagram brands every one of their photos. It's gonna say Kyle Bailey, the Kyle Bailey from Instagram. I don't know if that's it. I don't. I don't know what it is, but something in there. There's some magic in there that's happening. People just like Instagram better. But Instagram also grows organically a lot better. You can get, um, it's a little harder, it's much harder actually to interact with people. You can't, the best way to do it is to tag people. Whereas in Twitter you can talk and people will, people will come in to your conversation. It's not as much like that on Instagram. And of course you can't click links. That's a big, big, big negative right now. Uh, in post, what I mean. And even on the even on the image, if you put links in the image, it's not going to click to it. The only thing you can say is go type this, and that's why it's better to change it in your profile and direct people back to your profile because they can actually click that link. But Instagram really is the best one right now; it's the most effective. But with the exception that Facebook is going to tell you a lot of information about people, you can measure stuff really well with it. And there are certain channels like I've got a buddy of mine; he throws up a YouTube video. He pops that on Instagram, and he gets tons of views out of it. He just told me that last night on a conference call, so I'm going to try that. Um, Facebook groups is a, both of you should be in have some Facebook groups. Yeah, here's the reason why it's free now. I don't know if it always will be, but it is now. You can build your audience as big as you want, and you get siloed conversation, and you'll talk to everybody in the group. And that that's the only way you can do the old Facebook now. I don't know why they're letting you do that for free. And I don't know how long it'll last because that's a thing they, they choke down on. It could be that because they know that's relevant conversation and they want to encourage that as much as possible. They're trying to kill Google is what they're trying to do. They're trying, they've really ramped up their search algorithm. So their search is much better. I don't know if you remember, but two or three years ago, good luck on finding anything. You search for pizza, you might come back with, you know, Europe, at, or, a, or, a, or a hero sub. I mean, literally, you could come up with anything. Um, but now their search is much, much better. The hashtagging has helped a lot, and they have trending. That's helped a lot. That's gone a lot more for, uh, so they're trying to replace Twitter, Twitter with that, which they probably have done. I think it's pretty close to Facebook being more relevant. But groups is where it's at. So you can group your people. The nice thing about Facebook uh, photography is that you've got a lot of cool concepts. So what you can do is, um, I don't know, uh, amateur photographers. So you can talk to them, and when they have people, you can you can push to them. And go, hey, listen, you're going to run into people who do photo sessions you don't want to do, or you just know you're not any good at. Some photo I know photographers who won't do faces. They hate taking pictures of faces, <laughs> and they hate taking pictures of babies. So if you if you can take pictures of babies and do a good job, you can go to them and say, hey, look, and I'll give you a referral fee. You know, I'll give you a hundred bucks on every package of this that you sell me or whatever it is. Um, or just free training, you know, you can give them free training or free tips or whatever, but it gives you a silo. Then you can go to families and go, 
this is my family's page. I provide this, this, and this. So this is a thing where you do indirect benefits. So um, let's say you've got a line on, on local restaurants who are family friendly. Like uh, I know a place where kids eat free on Tuesdays. Almost every family restaurant is going to have a kids eat free night. Kids under whatever eat free. Um, you can provide a list of that. You can provide a list of family resources in a community. Family, you know, free stuff to do that's fun with your kids. You know, all these things because you're talking to families, right? And I happen to own a photography business you know, over here on the side. But it gives you, an, it, you know, it gives you the ability to have a silo conversation. I mean, that's, that's the value of it, you know. <laughs> so uh, Facebook groups is big. But again, if you don't know your core value proposition and your core problems you solve, your core conversation, none of this stuff's going to do you any good. None of it. it it's going to make you do more work, and you're going to be frustrated at the end of it because it still is not working for you. Yeah. Can I ask just a quick Yeah, question? we're done. This is the uh, – Will you stay late? So we can uh, – Oh, is it late? I gotta go. <laughs> yeah. um, on the Facebook groups, mm -hmm. how do you execute that? As far as you know, do you invite people to join? You it? actually add them. You have to. Add, you have to be friends with them. Uh huh. Yeah. So that so like. But you can get them to add their friends. They can add their friends, but you can't add their friends. Okay. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. So if you're going single dudes, um, you know. The hard here here's here's the thing in your demo that really sucks is guys suck. Well, I work with women. I know, but guys are gonna want <laughs> yes, to talk to. Yes, I know. Guys, I talk a lot about women. Okay. Listen, I talk I talk a lot of networking. It's like, dude, you're in a networking meeting. Don't don't only talk to the best looking girls in the group. Oh. <laughs> you know, I've been talking with a guy before. And a good-looking girl will walk past. He will quit talking with me and go, hey, uh, can I get your business card? You know, and it's so obvious. Right, right. It's just but the, what I'm referring to yeah, is I've got a, I have a friend of mine who she has a Facebook group. And what her biggest problem is trolling. Her biggest, She has 10,000 people in this group. Oh, wow. And guys will go in there. And some of the – they've had a couple they've had to ban. I think one guy they even reported the cops. Because what he was doing was saying, hey, yeah, come interview for my job. And then he's sitting on them in the interview. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So he treats it like a date. Right. But even more, like, they're in a desperate situation. They need a job. So they'll whatever. I mean, there's just some bad stuff out there. But just the basic, just the basic, I call it predatory networking, but not really male to female. Predatory networking for me is I'm going to go here. I'm going to get what I can get. I'm going to hand out all my business cards. And then I'm going to see if I can get a referral. That's predatory networking. Right. I'm here to get something out of this. I'm not here to give anything back. So just that basic level yeah. is one thing. And guys and girls do that. But then when you go to that next level, if you form a group, my point is, now it's going to help if you don't have any guys in it. That's going to help a lot. Yeah. I, yeah. I, I, I wouldn't. Yeah. And I can even tell you, if you get a group of families, if you get a whole list, if you've got 10,000 people in a group, you're going to have guys in there who pull crap. They're going to try to hit on one. I'm telling you, man. <laughs> it's ridiculous. I, I run networking groups. So I can see the guys who are going to do it. They start and they sit by the best looking girl, uh, or whatever they think the best looking girl to kill is. Two birds with one stone, you know? <laughs> <laughs> no, they're only trying to kill one bird. They don't even care about the other one. They're using the one to, to they're right. faking like they're killing that one bird. They really want to kill the other bird. Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, well, just, I guess my question so, like, for instance, I'm having a workshop this Sunday for oh, women. Nice. And it's going to be all about setting intentions for 2016, and we're going yeah, to do some vision yeah, board yeah, stuff online. Yeah. So, like, I thought, well, should I create a Facebook group for them to, like, keep them accountable, touch mm -hmm. it, you know, touch base, and, uh, you know, so that's kind of. Are, this, are you going to repeat this workshop? Not, this, I mean, no, I, no, I, I know, may, but, but I mean, not, in, in content? Because uh, you need to have that. You need to have essentially, like, your core boot camp. Right. That yeah. you always are doing. Yeah. Um, so now it can so be it can be the two thousand the, the setting it up for two thousand sixteen version of that. But that my, my, the reason I ask that's that's what you want to set a group for. So if you have your you know, yeah you don't want it to just be the people that showed up on November eighth the twenty minutes. Well right, but that's why you repeat the the boot camp. You want to right. repeat it like twice a year. But then that boot camp is this is again where you get the systemic message idea. So if you're in about better dating. Then you have better dating conference call. Then you have better dating. Here's a tutorial. Here's a blog post about it. 
but it all builds up to the highest level engagement, which is the boot camp. Well, some version of that. I'm not saying that this is your highest level engagement. I'm just saying that because that's what you're going to get somebody to pay 2,500 bucks for a weekend, a retreat kind of thing. Now you wow. may not have that in place right now, but that that's the model that I'm trying to tell you about. So what you're talking about probably follows somewhere in the lower third of this. Are they paying for this? Mm -hmm. How much is it? If you don't mind me asking. No, they're saying thirty-five dollars. Okay, great. Yeah, that's exactly what I'm talking about. So this is a lower level, mm -hmm. and that's the way you need to talk about it. This is a get your feet wet, try it out, see what this is. Now later, I'm building a retreat. A bunch of us are we're going to go sit around a campfire out in East Texas. We're going to roast marshmallows. And we're going to talk. We're going to get deep. This is this is for people who are just trying out this idea. But later, we're going to get serious. That's the one's 1500 bucks for a weekend. That's the idea. So you're pitching levels of engagement. Sure. Yeah. But along that line, you brand that idea, whatever it is, dating mastery. Let's call it dating mastery just so I've got something to hang it on. So you build that group around it. 80% of those people, 80% of those people are never going to buy from you. They're going to get as much free stuff as they can from you, and they're going to go on their way. Great. 20% of them are going to buy. They're going to start, get their feet wet. Some of them, that, that there's a certain type of person out there. They tend to be the top 4%. People talk about the top 1% all the time. It's about the top 4% of, of behavior people. They've worked so hard on, on getting their time valuable and understanding the value of their time and pushing off anything that doesn't build value in whatever they're doing that they buy value. They don't buy testing. They're going to actually test you out. The first test they do with you is going to be the highest ticket item you sell because it's worth it to them. They're going to buy the best thing, the best swing you've got. Some people are going to do that. Most people are going to try you out first. Most of your buyers are going to try you out first. Right. Probably 80% of those are going to stay in the lower third. 20% of those are going to move in the top two-thirds. 80% of those are going to stay in the bottom third of that. See, and it's going to keep going up until you have your highest level engagers. Does that make sense? So that's the funnel you're building. Uh, so look, the, 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 you want a Facebook group that's the core of that so that people can buy all the way up that funnel out of that one group. Does that make sense? I think so. What, what kind of messages are you pushing out on your Facebook group, or how are you using your Facebook groups? How are you? I don't do it currently, but how, yeah, no, no, how, would okay. I, or how do you currently? I only have a few, and I, this is relatively recent. About okay. uh, 60 days ago, I was on a, a mastermind call. And I knew about this group, but I didn't know how many people that I'd never saw. I'd never, I'd never saw in the numbers. I'd never seen the numbers. Um, so when I realized she had, I, I said over 10,000, but it's, I think it's like 14. I was like, that's incredible. You have an audience of 14,000 people that are all looking up at the hill at you. That's incredible. And you can do that for free. That's incredible. So I started immediately building out Facebook groups. Now I haven't figured out all my messaging and everything. And right now I'm starting out people that have seen my courses and my, my classes because this is all relatively new. I've been doing public speaking, but I haven't been strategic about it until recently. Yeah. So, but I do know it's all got to be around core messaging. And I have to look at it as 80-20, 80-20, 80-20, 80-20, 80-20, 80-20. All these people will never buy from me. Then this is my now my actual group who I'm talking to. All the rest of these people get to listen to me talk to this 20%. Yeah. Now, so yeah, and so now this 20% is now my 100%. So now I've got 80, 20 of those who are going to buy the higher ticket stuff, right? So that's how we, we have to think about it. That's how we have to think about it. It's hard when you're starting your own business and you're wanting to make sales and, you know. Well, right? you know, and there's there's certainly a measure of in the early days you take every nickel that comes in, sure. But right. speak your message. Don't let that message vary. Be willing to turn down deals that you know are a train wreck. If you know there's a guy, well, you only work with women, that's great. So if you know there's a woman and you know through the grapevine she's tried 80 different courses, maybe it's not the right fit, you know. Right. But yeah, I mean, you, you gotta, but you gotta sell too to know what people are gonna respond to. Well, and I think also just remembering like, you do have to do a lot that's not going to necessarily result in a sale. Yes, 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 yes. But you know, but, but I mean, what is it resulting in? That's a great question. That's a great question to end on. What is the action you're doing? What is the result? And if it's not producing a sale, it's not necessarily bad because remember, you've got the wide point of your funnel. Remember that 80% of the people in your funnel are not going to buy from you. So in some measure, you're again, you're getting to your golfer analogy where 
I'm refining my messaging so that it talks to more likely than not, just the message itself is gonna shed the wrong person. So then higher quality, not saying one person's worth more than that, I don't mean like that, but more targeted people are coming into my funnel. So now my 80 and my 20 represent a much different experience. The likelihood of buying is much higher. What they're going to buy is much higher. The value they're going to attach to it is much higher. Yeah. Yeah. So with that, um, so what you can do is you can, uh, on my email, I'm everybody, I'm everywhere, I'm Lee Kyle Bailey. Uh, you can text me. I prefer if you text me. And text first and last name and your email address and just say that you saw me at the SCORE presentation. Uh, and I will get you uh, the resource page. And Amanda, if you don't mind, it sounds like if we should do a discovery call to see if uh -huh. a few of these things okay. Um, we can set that up today before we leave. Um, but yeah, I'll get everybody the resource page. It's going to be just the general stuff, the recordings, as, as much as they are. Because this one looked pretty short. And I didn't start this one at the beginning, so I apologize for that. Um, there are others out there that have some of the early information, so I'll make sure and include. I'm going to actually include everything I've done for SCORE to this point. Uh, and the next video is going to say the same thing to this point. Because <laughs> the next one's the last one, right? Yes. That we have, and then we're talking for future stuff, right? Yes. Okay. Um, you are with the next one or no? I, well, no, no, no. no. Next, oh. one, next one is email marketing. And right. it's, uh, Amy, I can't say her last name yet, but. She's the one from Constant Contact. And then Kyle will be back in two for the weeks. Third one. And okay. it's going to be doing a marketing strategy for um, social affairs. Content marketing. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Okay. And I'm going to get into more granular stuff that day. We're going to be building out some stuff like live. We'll do some live stuff and WordPress and stuff like that. Yeah. Page building, page strategies. Page strategies will work on anything, but I'm going to show you how to do it on WordPress. Yeah. Well, I'm going to find out whether my brother I can do that stuff with my current yeah. website. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's always a good thing to know. I may be able to. Yeah, you never know. You very well may be able to. And like I said, you know. Um, Thank you so much. Absolutely. Great job. Great. I'm glad you enjoyed it.